This show is brought to you by Onnit.com. Go to Onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to get 10% off of all of their optimization products like Alpha Brain, New Mood, Shroom Tech Immune, Shroom Tech Sport. It's code word CHURCH to get 10% back. Go to HitEcigs.com, better tasting, longer lasting. The proof is in the vape. If you're looking to quit smoking in the new year, they have e-cigarettes and e-cigars for you at different levels of nicotine, and hopefully, eventually, you'll get down to zero if that's what you're looking to do. Use code word Joey's Church to get 20% off. Go to irondragontv.com and use code word Joey to get two free rentals of all of their martial arts movies. It's a new Roku channel. It uh, has um, all, of, uh, all of the favorite martial arts movies. Jackie Chan, a lot of the old stuff. <laughs> A lot of cool movies. It's Cobra Joey. And go to NailedItLife.com. And use Cobra Joey Diaz. To get uh, 20% off of the premier vapor pen on the market for all the oil and wax smokers out there. What'd you give me in those stars? What's in those fucking stars? <laughs> Did you put a label over another label? <laughs> <laughs> Did you put a label over another label? There's no label on anything he gets. <laughs> oh, the guy doesn't even work at the weed store. He just... <laughs> Just some guy rolling by with brownies. <laughs> Stars. <laughs> meth and a guy. I love you fuckers. The church of what's happening now. Monday, January 19th, you bad motherfuckers. Kick that shit, me. That's the motherfucking oh, Beatles, yeah. baby. Oh, shit. The first album? No. No. This was later. What was this reinvention, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? What was that supposed to be about? I have no fucking idea. It was so long ago. But the cover is tremendous. Yeah, so much in there. The cover is tremendous. They got the flowers and the shape of the guitar, and it says Paul's dead. Oh, it says that Remember on Remember they played the whole trick in the United States that Paul McCartney was dead and these fucking saps fell for it? But it was tremendous marketing. Yeah. They didn't know at the time. That was the most brilliant marketing they had ever fucking ran. They play I Am the Walrus backwards and yeah, it I, says... All that um, crazy. Sir. I just started getting vinyls and a couple of them had really cool like artwork and then I got a Steve Martin one and had a set list in the, on the back. It was pretty cool. I never yeah. had any well, vinyls. Set list. Get... That's a cool thing to put on your yeah. own. It was a photocopied set list on, like, a car, on the back of like a cardboard uh, headshot. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I, someone got me one. I, it's like kind of a thing now, to, like to get back into vinyl. But somebody got me a vinyl, so I got, I got a you a Bill Cosby with the pill in it. <laughs> it came with a pill. With a I got a whole bunch of Cosby albums for uh, Steve Simone. Got me a gift and got me a whole bunch of albums. I'm fucking nickel I, now. I wonder if they're. Uh, I wonder if any of the sets are the Spanish Fly sets. That's gonna be fucked up if it is. He does do a set about Spanish Fly. It's well I mean, known. I remember hearing about that in camp, but the, when you see him say it now, after all that stuff is out, it's really Larry curious. King, you're like, Ugh. Spanish Fly, that was big when I was Spanish growing Spanish Fly. That was big. I don't even know if it worked. A guy left Spanish Fly in his glove compartment. He went into the grocery store. His girlfriend found it, drank some, found it, came back. She was dead, humping the fucking <laughs> stick shit. My friend, the Olsons, <laughs> he gave it to his grandmother to see if it worked. We all chipped in. We gave him like $5. <laughs> And he gave it to his grandmother. You poisoned your friend's grandmother? Not me. He poisoned his own grandmother. Didn't poison her. Set her free. He just set that bitch free and shit. He's, <laughs> in fact, it's his birthday today. Mike Olson. He's 54. I see it on Facebook. So, What's happened, you bad motherfuckers? A beautiful day to be alive. I had a very fucking interesting evening. Weekend evening. I had a great uh, morning. I went. I had fungi. I still got fungi under my toenail. So I go get lasered fucking beamed off. If you got oh. fungi under your toenail, go get it laser beamed off. It is fucking tremendous. Everybody wants to live in the future? Here's your fucking chance. Oh. They shoot laser beams right in your toes. They get a hose with, like, water with ice in it, and they condense it. I don't know what the fuck they do. When they blow that on your toes to freeze them, then they beam it because it gets hot. Every once in a while, you're like, ah! <laughs> and it burns, and you can smell your fungus and your toenail frying in the fucking air. Uh -huh. It's only 10 minutes. I got to go today. I gotta go next Monday and the Monday after that, and I gotta rub some fucking my when do you get, When do you start getting fungus in your toes? Fucking yeah. 10 years ago. And then what does it do? 
Stinks. It pushes your toenail out, and the fungi develops underneath. And then, so what is it? Does it so hurt? your fung, you ever see people that have a fucking fucked up fun, uh, toenail? It hangs over when you go to the pool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. I cut it. I keep it good, and I paint it. I try this Wahili at jujitsu. I put a fucking uh, band aid on it, but it always falls off. Paint it, and people see that fucking infested fucking toenail. <laughs> I would give somebody a 50 to sniff it. Just sniff oh, that motherfucker. Oh, no way. Put that big old toe in your, in your nostril and take a big old fucking like it was. Some, a liquor sniff. Does it smell? Yes. It oh smells. My, it doesn't smell like you don't smell in the air. But sometimes <laughs> late, at, late at night, I'll cut the toenail. Underneath it smells, I'll, yeah. I'll, underneath it smells horrible. You let that, it's like a toe jam, but a little tougher. Oh. And you spin it around in your finger, and then you put that ball on your counter. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, you smell that ball, you almost fucking die. Ugh. That's disgusting male shit. That Sometimes I'll do that. I'll dig underneath the toenail, like like off here, and then I'll dig, if that's a toenail, like under like that, and then smell what's left. Oh, it's oh. horrible. Twit that we're live, Lee. People know. They I'll tweet them. They don't know. I've forgotten shit. Yeah. Welcome to the church of beautiful. I did something this weekend that was completely out of my fucking character. Maza. I drove two hours to a jiu-jitsu <laughs> tournament. Two on hours? The, on the five. Irvine. On a Saturday. To watch one? Yeah, at three o'clock and at two in the afternoon I decided me and I Mike thought you were Evan, joking. John Evan. No, man. You know, I don't do much and I, and people come to the shows and stuff and I always feel guilty that I don't go to enough things like yeah. that. Like how could at this point in my life could have some new I could sit there for a basketball game, a football game. You went to a Laker game once. Watch a Laker game. You know, yeah, you experience great. it. But I can't go watch stand up or Right. Improv comedy. I'll go watch a play if somebody knows of a good play in Hollywood. You know what I thought of on the way here? Let's go see that Angela Lansbury play. I wonder if she's still good. I heard she's freaking really good. Down on the. I mean, she's been an actor for 75 years. It's right there, right on the. Par- uh, probably somewhere around there. Probably tickets aren't expensive. I want to no. see if you can get better with it when you're that older. If it's you're across the dumb. W. It's across the oh, W. Really? Yeah, yeah. They say it's a great. The Pantages. The Pantages. It's the Pantages. It's across the W there. It's a great fucking. Hey, listen, bro. The older they get, the better they get. I wonder. You know, if, they, if they stay sharp mm-hmm. at their 70s, they could be a fucking powerhouse. Murder, she wrote, was in, like, she was old then. That was a long time ago. How's she still alive? Those people take care Fungus. of themselves. What do you think, Lee? How was your weekend? Shut, shut, shut I had a great Fungus weekend. Off. They had, did you see uh, Billy Crystal's new thing? It's not, like, it's like a, it's sh- uh, like a one-man show. Comedians on comedians or something? No, well, no, yeah, they give him a new show, which is probably going to be terrible, but his HBO special, like, 300 Sundays or whatever. Yeah. With his dad, it was, like, half stand-up, half one-man show with, like, pictures and stuff. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Half did stand-up, you watch half one-man show, no laughs. Not again. No, it had laughs. I mean, Four. his entire audience is, old, is like, 90, 90 years old. Billy but. Crystal has a precise audience. My mom loves yeah. him. 50-year-old Jewish They're older woman. Jews, and they go, and that's their pride and joy. Really? They dress up. They spend a little bit. They even take an extra 20 out of the ATM. Yeah. They live it up with Billy Crystal. There's just some Jews that Jews go out for and live it up. Like, they make Jews proud. Billy Crystal. And you don't know until you go. Like, I see it because I'm a non-Jew. So when I go, like, when I went to see Bette Miller. I went to see Bette Miller 30 years How ago. How is she? Phenomenal. Really? Bette Miller will do three hours. She'll do stand-up. She'll sing. She'll dance. Really? But it was filled with Jews who, for that night, they forgot they were Jews. That was a Super Bowl. Yeah, like you could tell. They were very nice. You know, they won't smoke pot or nothing, but they'll giggle and they'll turn their head. They'll, they'll smile. And even the men will loosen up a little bit like, holy shit. One of the first <laughs> non-animated kids movies, like when I was a kid, one of the first mov- like actual adult movies I saw was Mr. Saturday Night. My dad loved them. We had, um, yeah, we had he was on a VHS. movie star, right? Yeah. yeah he was when cool. Harry Met Sally, he was massive. I forgot about that. He I just know- seems like a has-been. Okay, what? How was he ever? In the movie that uh, isn't bad, the one he plays a cop. I don't know. With another black guy, with the, the the dancer, he plays a cop, and they fucking it's a Chicago movie. They're like Chicago mm-hmm. cops. He did that like in the eighties. Billy Crystal's been uh, the one with the Cowboys. City Slickers. City Slickers. City Slickers. Yeah, was he really did, good. Yeah, he made some good money. He did some good shit. Billy Crystal. I just, City Slickers. Harry Met Sally. There were some really good movies he was in, huh? My Giant. I'll oh, forget it, but at least there was that. Well, Three Hundred ba- Sundays is about him and his his love for the Yankees. for his father. For his father and yeah. what they did. That's what dads and he sons do. They go to the he baseball, baseball games, baseball. you know. It's like and a poor man's Woody do. Allen, though. I always saw him as that, just like the actor version of Woody Allen. I never Allen. got to see any of Woody Allen's stand up. Was he funny? I don't know. I heard an album. I have no idea. I think so, but I don't know. He was like deadpan ish. Yeah, deadpan. You know, like very, like, uh, well, they all wanted to be the crazy so, Jew. So, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. What's the so crazy guy? Home. 
Who's the crazy joke? From the 60s. The reason why we're here. Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. If you watch that, the one I always talk to you, yeah. about, the black and white one, that's one of my favorite pieces of stand-up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because, yeah. Uh, i never seen any of that. Is it good? Yeah, it is good. You catch it, and you're like, damn. Damn, look at this motherfucker go. Jazzy. Yeah, he was jazzy. He had, he had a great rhythm to it. That's cool. But that was interesting. I had never been to a jiu-jitsu tournament before. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what the most interesting thing was about it. What? That I don't feel bad being that fat in a jiu-jitsu gi no more. Why not? Because there was a ton of fat jiu-jitsu guys. Oh, no, really? Really? And they're tremendous after a certain level. Like, after they hit a brown belt, yeah. they get bigger. Like, they get bigger and fatter, like, but a strong fat. Yeah. And I saw this one black belt uh, pull guard, and he almost ripped the other guy's shoulders off. Oh, because he's so big? He's so big. Like, 300 Both. pounds, he just ran, fucking pulled him Yeah, if you're going to move that much weight every yeah. day, you probably get stronger. You just yeah. get... It was very interesting to see them take their tops off. I mean, I went to see something else. I didn't go to see that. I just went to see a tournament, Neon Bellies, and, yeah. you know, Laplathas and shit. That's it. And I ended up fun, picking huh? that out. Did you see, up, like, eight eight fights going on at once? Eight, it was eight six fights at once. Going on Chuck once. Norris was there. Oh, really? Ashton was there. The whole Machado family were there. All the the Gracies wow. were there. I went to one with Tate in Long Beach. Yeah, they're fucking... I mean, I was... And I appreciate the jiu-jitsu a lot. Listen, when I was a yeah. kid, well, not when I lived in New York. Renato was there. Or what's the kid's name? The black kid? LaRanja. LaRanja was LaRanja. there. We hugged. Not we had LaRanja. a great time. My friend Hugh was there. You know, when I was a kid, not when I lived in New York City and did karate with LaRanja's father, but when I lived in Jersey, I got to say three years of my life, you had to go to three things a weekend. With this karate, Gushin Guru Karate, where I went in Jersey, the guy's name was Kevin Norlander or something. And he was a Vietnam vet, but he was not all there. Remember when we talked about him? Somebody called in, and he goes, he still teaches. And he wanted you to go to three things a month. You only have one Sunday off a month or one Saturday. So he would check them off. Like, you, before you sent your application, he would check them off. So really? every month you went to the Bronx. That's what I did, guys. Before I started smoking dope, me and six idiots like you would get together at 8 in the morning with our karate geese, and we'd take a bus somewhere. And we take a bus, we go to an auditorium, we'd each spar, not with each other in a tournament. We do forms, and then three of the six would take a gold or a platinum or whatever the fuck the medals are, and we'd go home. Once I started smoking pot, I didn't want to be with those guys no more. Not that I didn't love them, right. I was just too embarrassed. They didn't get highly, uh, Ari. All they did was do karate. So these guys didn't understand that world. So the more I got high, the more I distanced myself from those guys, which yeah. was my fucking... I would have been a killer if I had with those guys. Those guys were great guys, but that's what they did, and that's this lifestyle. Like the kid, I saw Travis Nawaza down there. He owns a t-shirt company. He's friends with Eddie. He dates a friend of mine. Who? Travis. He went Saturday to this thing, which was the world, whatever, jiu-jitsu tournament, which is a league, and then Sunday he was going to go court to do another tournament in the morning and he got arm barred at really at the tournament I was at he just likes competing yeah but he took a gold yesterday in two categories wow. so that's the life we bomb we do good and it's all for God go up again yeah you just keep rolling so it was very interesting to see that I learned that I, I you know I, I obviously at this age I can't do a tournament every fucking week and prepare for a tournament I die you know I go to jiu-jitsu once twice a week I walk around sore for three fucking days so but it's very interesting, isn't it? Listen, guys, I said I was, every time I went by an exit, I wanted to make a U-turn. Why? Because it was bumper to bumper. Oh, uh, you wanted to What's it take to get the fucking nerve on a good day? 45. 45, yeah. It took me two hours. No. On a weekend? On a weekend, on a Saturday. Well, no. the five, guys. You got Walt Disney. You got Disney. fucking whatever farms. You got San Diego. You know, you got people going places. Viva Libre. What's up with you, Negro? Talk to me. So you got... The special premiered last week. What did Viva Libre mean? Viva Libre li live fucking freely. Oh. So your special really? aired last Liberty. weekend. Special aired on Friday, yeah, thanks. I man. got a tape. I watched the first 10 minutes and the baby started crying, so. <laughs> well, that's what I do to babies. Uh, <laughs> I make them cry. That's uh, what comedy's good for. It. So now Thursday night you have storytellers coming on. Yeah, this is not K happening. Key and Peel. No, yeah, Key is doing it. Bobby it looks Lee pretty and funny. Me. It looks pretty funny. Yeah, he told a good story about a crackhead. Story about a crackhead. So it's... You know what? Uh, whenever I read about this, this is not happening. Yeah. The big 
push, they say, is how you started this from ground zero. Ground zero. Then it went online, and then they got the television. Something that really doesn't happen in this town that much. Well, it was a, it was a show at the improv It was a first. show in the side room of the improv. At the side room with no 40 alcohol. 40-seat side room. No alcohol. We weren't even allowed to bring it in. Before I even met you, Joey, the first show I ever saw in L.A. was uh, your show with uh, Job Stories, and Kanane went up. That was, a, was that in the main room? Yeah. The that, that was the first show I'd ever seen in, in, in LA. It was five bucks, yeah. Yeah, five bucks. Experimental. Try some shit. I'm trying to break the bank. Try some shit. <laughs> the comics, you know, don't feel like you have to. Yeah, we did it in that side room. 12 people were there. You were on that show. You were on the first one. Me, Marin. You, Marin. Steve Aggie. Uh huh. Who else? Dylan Brody. Wow. He's like a storyteller. And then uh, and Dan Madonia. Eddie Brill's illegitimate son. <laughs> was on the first wow. one. Wow. And now, look what it's become. Yeah. And now it's going to grow. Once it hits TV, it's going to be like a rap battle. Mad- Madonia did, did one about, it was, all, it was all psychedelic stories. Madonia did one about chasing his friend Benji outside on Fountain at fucking 1 p.m. naked, running, trying to find Benji, getting arrested on mushrooms, <laughs> naked and arrested while you're on mushrooms. Then that Brody guy talked about peyote and how these Indians gave him fucking peyote when he was 14 at Indian sleepaway camp. They're like, it's time. Let's go. And then... You talked about that concert. Was it Pink a Zeppelin Floyd. Pink, Pink Floyd, Floyd concert? Oh, is that, is that the one that got filmed? And the trip to it, yeah, yeah, oh, cool. That was the first. That was the first one. It got filmed in two parts. I didn't know how to make a YouTube video. <laughs> it's one of the shittiest fucking YouTube videos of all time. But people liked it though, when they saw it. The pop off. That's what you first talked about. Pop off. Pop off vodka. Pop off vodka. And then uh, Ag talked about getting laced at at, uh, at Grateful Dead. And uh, Marin talked about uh, taking some some shrooms or some acid at Grateful Dead. Amazing. That's how it fucking started. At least I had. Did you guys have any like idea when you were starting the show of maybe getting on TV or you just nah, wanted to do a show? No, we just wanted to do one good show. We didn't want to get it going again, but everyone had such a good time. It was so fun and cool. Twelve people were in the audience. That was it. Belladonna was there with her husband. She was one of the two of the twelve. <laughs> This porn star family. Yeah, it was fun as shit. And then Eric, Abram, he's like, dude, let's do that again. So we did it again. It was something else, another topic. Yeah, that was five years ago. I still have the poster that Kevin Christie made, this sweet fucking giant, like size of that thing, hand-painted, psychedelia, and these crazy fonts. Save it, fuck that. Of course I'll save it. It says Joey Diaz, Devagey, Put that Dylan Brody, Ari Shafir. Put that years and shit. Break Mark the Mary. bank. Yeah, exactly. There's only two. I got one, and and what's his name's got one. Eric's got one. Yeah, that was cool. That was fun, man. We were there from the beginning. That's cool. Yeah, and then later they were like, "Let's do a web series." We tried to pick a, pitch it to a show a few times, like a couple years in, but they were like, mm, "Maybe with some other host." And I was you like, know, "Yeah." Last week on the Rogan podcast, we spoke about when we first started going out with them together. Yeah, how people hated us. No, he hated us. Hated. Why are you bringing these losers? Hated, but the main spokesman for the loser contingency. Fag Here we go. From San Francisco. I was just there. <laughs> I fucking hated that guy. <laughs> and everybody hated him. I had heard about that. He was a dick for years. And all he did was talk shit about us. All he did, he talked shit to the Oh, wrong Rogan's going to bring his losers again. He talked shit to two people that came, turned right around, and went back to me. So I always knew. So every time Rogan all these people talk shit to your friends and expect you yeah, not, to, not tell to, you. to tell you. Is this course. still the Booker up there? The Booker up there. He ain't he's still not the a Booker. booker he's boy. He's fired. Okay. Huckleberry I was going to say. And he, uh, we went, and every time, and it was funny because the last time I saw him, he pulled me aside and he goes, hey, I might get you this gig. And I remember thinking, look at this fucking guy coming it, around. Yeah. He goes, there's a show and I really want to get you on it, but Sharippa doesn't want you on it. But I've been pulling for you like a motherfucker, you know. That could easily mean Sharipper wants you, and yeah. he doesn't. It's so, uh, and it's such a feeling. Like that guy must feel bad now. Like there's so many people that gotta feel fucking bad. There's still yeah. a lot of people yeah. that fucking hate me. I hate them just as bad. Like the other night, I, I know was showing, people go, mm, "All right, I guess." But you know what? They don't even. I don't even think they think about it. I just think they go, "Oh, cool, that guy's doing great," and they don't even remember how much they fucking said you were and go nowhere. No, they remember. There's certain people that. I fuck with them now. Like, if I see, <sighs> listen, the greatest thing Madonna ever did was about eight years ago. Madonna? Madonna had a a raffle and a thing of all her rejection letters. Oh, really? And they said people were running for fucking cover. That bitch saved every rejection oh, letter. You're all not, these people, all you're these not fucking a singer, you'll never like, be anything. Uh, 
your voice is horrible. Where do you think you are? Saved her rejection she letters. Saved her rejection letters. And not even until she recorded her first album. Even after that, even she after. was a superstar for 25 years. She still saved them. You guys were both too young to remember 1985, 30 years ago. No, I don't. Right now, Madonna had this country. Like, it was her and Michael. Like, she was telling Michael I remember Jackson. everything. The, the the gloves. I was 11. Yeah. The yeah, gloves everywhere. The, the, the stocking gloves, whatever they're called. And all those, everybody, everybody dressed, dressed like, like a virgin. Everybody. Every chick had gloves, glasses, the blonde And then hair. she switched it up with Vogue and all that shit. And you're like, wow, she was massive. Her book, when I was in Israel, her book came out of, like, sex 91? pictures. Yeah, 92. 91 92. 92. She, yeah. She put the, this is what this bitch did for <sighs> here. She put the book out with the pictures of her naked. She made Rodman look good. Yeah, she took the, she made the Pepsi video and she got fired for putting the black Jesus. Oh, yeah. Life is a Oh, yeah, and then her thing was the, one of the first things to get banned and go massive. Massive. She sold so That's many actual she copies. All she VHS knew. copies of that video. She knew she was going <sighs> to fuck with them. They wouldn't put it on TV, so fine. I'll sell my own and be a millionaire off She's it. She's fucked. She did all. And then the you'll first. play it. You'll play it eventually. Justify my love. Just to was find my like, yeah, just she was to getting fucked love. by like a Jesus yeah, statue. Yeah, put the beginning of must justify my love. She's getting fucked like an Let animal. Let me see that, that monitor. Video. Let me see that monitor, cocksucker. Don't hide it from me. Just to my just to my love. God, yeah. she was. Uh, I masturbated her so many times. Yeah, yeah, she was badass, man. Oh, her pictures, her black and white pictures, are great. But she had hair in the armpits. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Nobody remembers that shit. We block it. Let me see that monitor. This is just fucking. This is just fucking. Big screen it. Yeah, oh, she's already half naked. What's she doing? She's coming from getting fucked or something? Yeah, she's had makeup. With sperm on her breath. Oh, Look yeah. Her. She's been drinking martinis. She doesn't know what flavor in her mouth. Oh, my God. Look at her. She was like, I'm selling sex. <gasps> Who are those people? She's dropping a briefcase. What? Was that a guy or a girl? I don't know. Doesn't matter. That's Madonna. She's taking her... Sh oh, my God. Can the people see this? No. Wait, actually. Oh, shit. Jesus, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What year is this? 91. 92. Oh my god. Fuck Lana Del Rey. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was... half kiss thing. Fuck, she's hot. Oh my god. Oh, somebody else is fucking in the. She's a savage, guys. Her marketing is fucking marketing 101. Oh my god. She pushed the envelope. So they banned her, and then she doubled up. She doubled up on everybody, dog. Oh, my God. I'm horny as shit now. Well, go relieve yourself. Go to the <laughs> bathroom and jerk off on the floor like a like a, like a peep show. Golly. She was so hot. I forgot about it. All I see is that fucking dinosaur now. How old was she then? 30. She was 30. She broke late. But even at 40, she was looking kind of good. She yeah, but now she's like 71. Is it, she was like doing the Kabbalah. No, she ain't 71. Jennifer Lopez looks well really be. good. No, fuck that. She bought all the time before. To look you don't good. like Jennifer Lopez? Not at all. Why? I used I to. She used to be hot. She's, hey, did you see that video she just did with Iggy Azalea? No. Yeah. What? Whose ass is the fucking fattest? Yeah. Uh, something like that. <laughs> fuck that noise. <laughs> Had to play it in surround. I, I think that's the white name of the song. <laughs> but whose ass is the fattest? <laughs> <laughs> Put the pizza down, Iggy. Put that pizza down. <laughs> it's getting too much. It was chubby and then it's too much now. I don't know why she started balling about eight years ago. Who? Her, Christina Aguilera. They just fucking pissed me off. <laughs> this one is cute. You know why I like Christina Aguilera? What? She came into Ellen after her after she had her baby. And you know how women when they have, when they get pregnant their boobs get big. She was wearing this. She was already had big boobs. She's wearing this like cleavage like cut shirts just on the cleavage. She sits down. Ellen's like, please welcome Ellen. I mean Christina Aguilera. She comes in. Ellen's fucking staring at those tits. <laughs> she cannot stop staring. And Christina's like, oh, it's good to be here. And, like, and she goes, yeah, it's good to have you. Um, and then Ellen looks up and goes, so you had a baby, huh? <laughs> oh, they were... Oh, anyway, so I'll like her for that. 
So we were talking about the <laughs> fucking Comedy Central thing. Oh, yeah. This yeah. Thursday and every Thursday. For how long? Eight weeks? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. I'm, I'm on the last one. You're on the very last one. As usual. <laughs> You're closing it out. <laughs> every. <laughs> You're headlining. Thing. They always, Stand Up Revolution. Everything. You're headlining. Like, Stand Up Revolution, they put me on after the janitor. At like midnight. <laughs> at fucking one. I got there at eight and I got one up at one in the morning. They always put me on <laughs> fucking last. It's the, it's the worst ever. And people, oh, yeah, yeah, you're going up. No, I'm not going up fucking last. These guys all got better credits than me. Why am I going up fucking last? <laughs> Fuck you, motherfuckers. I'm going up third. Man. It's well, a great you. story. I requested it. I want that to be the last one. You know, man, you're one of the few people episode. who don't give a fuck. When they say to him, Joe Diaz, you're like, he's doing it. He's doing it. And that's it. Gabriel That was the first discussion. Me. Yeah. Right when we were meeting, he was like, well, should we have people? I'm like, well, Joey will do it. And then let's start booking it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And it's a great feeling when your friend... I remember Gabriel pulling me aside going, Dog, they were like, no, 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 no. He goes, I just sat in that room and said, yes, 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 <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. They didn't fight me on you. They didn't fight I me on you at all. I will pay him out of your pocket. Because that's what he told me. He goes, I'll do it out of my pocket. Really? And I'll put it on my own DVD. <sighs> I'll do Diaz just for me. And they all agreed. They were all down there, the same fucking people that were down there, whatever, were down there to Arizona. And I had to go up in front of them. And it's the weirdest thing because they tried to put the maluk on me. <laughs> they put the maloik on me, you know. The maloik. So fucking. Uh, what do they do? They just stab me down. Oh, like, really? Oh, so then you get worried because you know they don't like you. Yeah. So then you're like, yeah. am I supposed to perform in this environment? Yeah, you know. You just know. The other night, it's like when I went to that place for you the other night, I felt the heat from people. What place? Oh, that like comedy right, thing. There were just too many people who didn't like me there. There was just too many. There was an assortment. They were like, what's this what rust about? What the fuck is this shit? There were a lot of people that did like you. No. When they showed that preview video, you're the only one that got claps. You and Miss Pat. Let me tell you got, something. Like friend. audible claps. I wanted to tell the darkest story. <sighs> you should have. Fuck those people. No, you should have. That's the no, show. No, no, Say whatever no, you want. No. Those people were not going to handle me hitting somebody with a bat. His eyes were rolling and we <laughs> thought we killed him. That and was great. They did it. You got to it eventually. They loved it. And it's funny because I have not seen a picture of Didi, the kid who had the hepatitis C. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't really have a hepatitis Didi Cantero? C. He's got HIV. Oh, no. That's way worse than hepatitis. Yeah. I don't even know what hepatitis does. I know what HIV does. My other buddy who died had hepatitis C from shooting uh, steroids. You die from hepatitis C? You could die. He Isn't that pre-HIV? Yes. Well, I, I, no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. No, it's not. I'm so sorry. There's two hepatitis. Hepatitis B. Yeah, there's two hepatitis. There's two hepatitises. I think they could be a. I don't know. Hepatitis. I had a friend hepatitis. who had the really bad one, the one that you can't drink alcohol, you can't do a thousand ever again. Things. Yeah, but he did whatever the fuck he wanted to. He was like borderline fucking. When you have to go do the thing with your blood every week. For you to justify but, my love. But that's always been tough for me. It's like performing. Like, whenever you see Jordy with his buddies, I don't like those people. Jordy, I don't Jordy's like. cool, right. Jordy's cool. Because they're too straight. Yeah, they're, they're straight. too fucking straight. And you look at them as the, pa- as the face of the people that rejected you for the last 15 years. Well, you look at them like as... You have the job position of the people who say, Joey Diaz is shit. I don't understand. I don't know. I, I have a hard time with so many levels of this business. Yeah. I had a, I'm happy that you're doing well because it gives a lot of people a black eye. Because most people who listen to the show and people at home don't understand how the comedy thing works here. When you get here, Ari, how many people weren't even up to your level and were already with three yards and oh, yeah. getting deals? And yeah. you guys like you and me are sitting there going, Come on. What the fuck are Can we doing? Can we just make wrong? a dollar? And people like, I just ah. get an audition? And we would get doubt. Bro, I met with every agent. I met with every agent in this town that would go, I love you. But now I gotta sell you to fifteen people, and that's gonna be tough. Is it just more marketable and has nothing to do with skill at that point? No, it's, it's, it's a thousand, part of it. It's a but thousand. it's also you know it's a who, who they see you with too. Right. I was dirty. I was way dirtier on early on, and then you know eight years pass, and people go, "Oh, that guy's filthy," and it's like, eh. you know, it's fine to be filthy, but I'm not as bad as you think I am. You just haven't seen. It. So they get in a, a head thing in your head, or you, they associate with Rogan. And it's like, oh, you must be a meathead. And I'm like, all right. Or like Nick DiPaolo used to think I was an alt comic because I wore cardigans. And he's like, oh, you must love Janine Garofalo. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I can see you. So people see you as one way, and that's it. It's, I don't know, you slipped through the cracks. You know, when I moved here in 97, the store was very cocaine-oriented. It was coke, really? 
It's not coke anymore. And uh, I was a coke guy. I was a cokehead. And I was part of that circle. And I heard, and somebody pulled me aside once, like in 99. Like in 99, somebody pulled me aside and said, hey, man. I was, and you know who started? The first guy, Luke Torres. Uh, Luke Torres went to yeah. a meeting. And in the meeting, he goes, Joe Diaz, that cokehead, a week earlier, I had given him like 10 bumps of coke. So this is the sound. This is what you need to worry about. Like I was doing coke with this guy, yeah. and a week later he goes to a pitch meeting that a friend of mine is and there. It says you're a big cokehead. And he goes that cokehead. Oh, that's not a very friendly thing to do. The Latino, no, 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 no. one's less supportive than the Latino community no, in no, comedy. No, but that's no what, one's less supportive. But that's what I was saying to you. Uh, I was telling you outside was smoking pot. That I've been involved. I've been in prison, like in a halfway house situation. I've been in prison. You know, I've lived in situations where I was surrounded with scumbags because I was a scumbag, you know, right. not for long periods of time. But people that you had to watch yourself at every level, like you had to put your hands in your pockets in your sleep. Like that, that's how bad it was because you never fucking knew. Comedians, to me, without the violence, just with the emotional, are worse people than the people I was locked in with in prison because... They do something worse to you than rob you. If I come up to Ari and I go, Ari, give me 300 bucks. I need it to pay the rent. I don't pay Ari again. That's it. I don't pay Ari again. Ari gets mad at me. I'll never see Ari, whatever. But with comics, you have like this fake war that doesn't fake exist. Fake war. Like you're, like you're in competition, but there's, you're not in any competition. I didn't do this to be a competition. My third yeah, I year want to be the best one. I want to get any better than you. It's like, what? I thought you just want to be a successful comedian. My third year in town, I realized that when you get here, you have People friends. People cut your legs out from under they you. They do. And, I and, saw a girl, her, her agent was thinking of signing her friend, like her good friend. And she talked him out of it. And she's like, no, nah, it's my, my category. Don't do that. And it's like, well, are you kidding me? And then that decides somebody's life. Yeah. So they don't get an agent of the year. They don't get an audition they could have booked in that time. That could have been their friends. How do you live with yourself when you do It's like I was watching. You forget it instantly. I was watching a show yesterday on Blacklist, uh, Blacklist, and they were just killing random people. And I was like, how do you think you live if you killed somebody and like be okay with it? How could like I be okay if someone was going to book Joey for a comedy show? Yeah. And I said... Oh, don't. He, he's a bad person. People compartmentalize. That's how. People compartmentalize. You ever see the killing fields or the killings, whatever? And yeah. they, they're finally remembering what they did. Murdered fucking 600 people. Jesus. And when they're finally remembering it, they're like, oh, shit, that was bad. But they don't think about it normally. They're like, yeah, hey, we used to chop their heads off and stuff. It still wasn't getting set in. What was that movie? The Killing Fields? The I documentary? About Pol Pot and stuff? Yeah, but all those people that were just like, they were like, we had to go here because it was a courtyard that would catch all the blood. It would fill up. We'd be up to our ankles in blood. We we don't want to waste bullets, so we'd take chicken, uh, fucking piano wire, wrap it around their heads, and, and an eight person pull. Jesus, you know Mark Babbitt oh. was a friend of mine. Mark Babbitt was, yeah. He stood and for Babbitt, and I liked Babbitt, even though he was a fucking freak. And I sent him a blank tape and all that <laughs> shit to see if he'd ever watch it. Yeah, and he never watched it. He told me it was great. I never put nothing on it. And I sent it to him. Freddie Soto kept torturing me, going, "Babbitt wants to hire you, but he wants the tape. If he wants to hire me." Then, then hire the me. Then hire me. What's he need a tape for? Oh, he needs a tape. And you he sent him a blank tape. And he hired me. And he hired you. He so hired why did he need the tape? If it was a, if it was, because it just, it just. He just wanted you to jump matter. through the fucking hoop. So we became friends, Babbitt. You know, yeah. and when he was doing the Freddy, remember he was doing Memorial? that tour with Freddy. No, oh. they did the tour with Freddy. Three amigos. Yeah, then uh -huh. they do the three amigos. I went and see a Freddy and, and Pablo. Pablo. And I remember that I went backstage. And they had like a little food set up. And these three comics were 30 feet away from each other. But I could feel the energy in between them, how much they didn't want to be around each other. Yeah. Like no matter what, how funny, whatever it was, Carlos would go, yeah, Pablo's funny because he's a cokehead. You know? Uh, and then, they, you know, they would say something about Freddie. Carlos would, Carlos in those days was the type of guy that he would mess with you before you went on stage. Uh-huh. In a little way. Like he was hosting some show. Hosting a stand-up show, and before he brought Johnny Sanchez on, this is a TV show or something. Before he brought Johnny Sanchez on, he did his One main his... bit, and it's like it won't be in the edit. You know, they'll never show it because they already did my time up front. But just to f and then Johnny's like, "What the fuck, man? Why would you do that? I was at... about to do that whole bit. Why would the? 
That was at the so improv. mean. And I remember one time while they were shooting that Carlos was hosting and Freddie was yelling at Pat Buckles that he was quitting because Carlos had done his joke. He saw on Mind of Mencia, he saw there was like a promo and they showed like four different clips on either side of the, like a picture of Mencia when it was first premiered. And Freddie was crying because he was like, those three of those are my bits. He took three of my bits and he's putting them on the Comedy Central website. How am I going to convince anyone those are my bits? And he was crying about it. It was fucking hard and I learned that. And I was also upset with like the Rogan thing. Each other. I, I, you know, it's just something I have with comics. And I remember telling Felicia, and Felicia didn't understand because she's such a nice person. Yeah. You know, Felicia buys into it. You know, and then they throw, you know, they throw you the fuck out of wherever the fuck they throw you. Out. For me, I always had this silent thing with comedians. I either liked you, or I didn't like you. Yeah, you sure. Know? And, you, you nod and say hello, and you walk yeah, on, and or you, you walk don't. on and you stop and you talk to people. But in my world, I gotta be honest with you. They're the shittiest people I've ever met. You know, and there's so many different, like, perspectives that I look at. Yeah. Like, I've had club owners call me after they've gotten fired or something and say, hey, man, how you doing? I pick up the phone. Yeah. They go, good, how you doing? You talk to him and he goes, man, nobody called me back. You of know? course, they didn't That's really it. like you. That's it, because you don't have nothing to offer. Right. We're so trained here. You know, it's not about friendship. It's about like you're my friend. I like you of the people I have to do this with. Okay, if somebody came up yeah. to me and said Ari Shafi is a rapist, That's... and Ari came up to me a week later and goes, "Dog, I'm a big time comic. I want to take you on the road, but I'm going to pay you three thousand dollars in your <laughs> meals." You know what? In real life, you go. F- in real life, I'd go go fuck yourself. But as a comedian, I tolerate Ari yeah. and his rapisms. You know, there's comics that are gay. That's that what take- Taylor said about Mencia. He goes, if he just gave comics parts, shitty, like, fucking $200 parts on his show, Nobody no one would have really defended it. They just would have been like, eh, you know, you shouldn't do it, but whatever. I've never been big on people who sell their souls at any point in their life or anything. Mm-hmm. So I never understood the whole... I'll go That's why I know about you when you were like when you were like, they made you fucking give up your cats. And he's like, fuck, I'm not giving up my cats. And you're like, what are you going to do? He's like, I'm going to move. Like you're gonna pay twice as much in rent. Go, yeah, what am I gonna do? Give up? What kind of man would I be if I give up my pets to save money on rent? What would I do? Yeah. So you moved to North Hollywood. You never thought you could live in North Hollywood. Lee said something to me. We're Hollywood born and bred. Oh my God, I love Hollywood. But then the traffic was killing me. Lee yeah. said something to me last night. We spoke about just general shit, football. Yeah. And he told me. Did that you see that game? Yes, I oh. did. He told me he went to the gym yesterday, a 24-hour fitness, and it was empty. Yeah. Since January 1st, it's been packed. Oh, because of the resolutions. So that means on the 7th, on the 18th, the commitments were gone. <laughs> Not even three weeks Not in. Not even three weeks in. <laughs> That's how we are as friends to one another, yeah. a lot of people in this town. The first week of the no year, I, I took 20 minutes to get a parking space, and then yesterday no one was there. No loyalty. No loyalty. There's really nothing. You know all I was like Dave Rath, no matter what? Because he was there for Freddie when he died. He was there, like... Taking care of the funeral arrangements as we were all weeping and stuff. He wasn't even representing Freddie, but he stood up and did it. And then Brody Stevens, too, when he started going crazy. Dave Rath was in charge of all that. And I was like, you know what? You got to be loyal to shit like that. No matter what happens down the road, you got to be like, all right, man, you're always going to be cool. You need a hand up. Yeah, people don't, they forget. They're like, whatever. We're, that, you're, I never you're understood, below me now. I never understood I see people so much forgetting. Climbing. I never understood people forgetting. I never, when people tell me something like that about people, it shuts me down like a human. Like but then you, you sell a story two different ways. Like we were, we were talking with you and Justin, talking about how Marin's manager was like, oh, he wasn't loyal. He got big and then he dropped me. But then you hear from the other side, Marin was like, look, I'm not doing anything. You're not going to be a single audition. I'm going to try this podcast and stuff. And his manager was like, nah, stupid idea. Won't go anywhere. So then he dropped. So then, but then the, the story gets sold. Uh, he's not loyal. But it's like, no, this guy was a piece of shit. He didn't believe in me anymore. He didn't believe me. I dropped him and then grew. So it depends. You know, people sell those stories both ways. And then the best part, I'm sure you just dealt with it. How many people who were shitty to you wanted then to be on your new TV show? Dude, you... No, I didn't really get any of that. Really? I I wouldn't really get any of that. But when I booked my first commercial, I remember people like saying hi to me. They're like, you wouldn't even give me the time of day? And now you're coming up to me and saying hi, how you doing? Because you think I'm doing... Because I'm more of a player? In the biz, it feels really well, good. To be I would say to hi to you, and you would walk by me. You know, I told I said Eddie Griffin. I told that once. I was this girl who liked that in a double. She was like, "Oh, hey, how you doing? I saw your commercial." Like I've, I've tried to say hi to you like twenty times. I didn't say anything. I asked Eddie Griffin. I was like, "Did you, did you get that?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "You know how you get back at them?" I was like, "How?" He goes, "You have sex with them. That's how you get back with them. You have you fuck them." 
Just cash in, man. Who cares? <laughs> I told Rogan that because he never really, you know, Rogan's had his career. Yeah. And we've been around Rogan, and he thinks that everybody's career is the same way. Yeah. And you and I both know that it was two That's different. not every, everybody exactly. Everybody has a different career. Whenever he's like, oh, that club owner's nice to me. Like, yeah. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> Everyone because, says he's an asshole. Right. He's nice to you. What do you think that is? So uh, I told him that yeah. your life changes dramatically once somebody sees you on TV the mm -hmm. first time. Even if it's just having one line, because now you changed. Now they know it could happen. Yeah. Not today. Maybe that wasn't the role, but it could fucking happen. We don't want to have to tell you no. How many right. Times in this so town, people just say, oh, keep in touch. They don't want to say, no, I don't see it. They don't say it. They don't say that. I've always said that. Uh, just say it. Just say, look, I don't see uh, this happening with you right now. One of the biggest things that bothered me about Best of in luck, this town in the that's beginning. That's not my taste. Were people not getting back to me in the beginning? Like yeah, go to you'd a meeting, wait and wait, wait and wait. wait and please call me. They don't ever want to tell you no because you might remember him later on. As the guy who fucked well, up. Well, regular job interviews do that too. No one gets calls back ever. Well, you have to call them. Oh, I've never done that. You have to call them. When you apply for a job, yeah, you got. When call. you're in the car, you got to follow up. I call that motherfucker and thank him, and then a day later, I call him to ask him if he got all my paperwork in. Did you get everything you needed? Maybe I forgot something on the application. No, I got everything here. And nine out of ten, the guy would go, "Well, I got you on the phone. Let me get you back for another interview, or you got the job." Just because yeah, because they're called. like, "Oh, uh, you know what? You oh, I even looked at the application. He was like, the guy wasn't bad. He had he hadn't gotten to it yet. Oh, I got to go over those fucking ten people. Decide who oh, this guy." Yeah, yeah, you seem fine, man. Yeah, come on. Yeah, go ahead. Why what not? Best for you a salesman call. If you're going for a salesman job, and you're not selling, if you don't call yourself? that motherfucker from the car, the house, the hotel, the plane, then you're not going to get it because that shows them you're persistent. That's how you sell something. Huh? Nobody's going to sell you something the first time they call you. Come yeah. on, Jack. I'm going to call you the fourth time. Jack, grab the car. I'm going 4 and 0 today. I got the New England Patriots going fucking big. <laughs> One of the shows I worked on, this guy, kid got his job because he just was walking around handing out resumes. Really? He ended up sucking, but he, he got people the job used to, because of it. People used to throw their rolled up scripts in, in uh, convertibles as they were leaving the studios. Oh, God. Remember that? <laughs> as I used to say, they'd roll up their scripts, put rubber bands around them, and as people were driving out of the studios in their convertibles, people would throw their scripts into the cars <laughs> like get people to read their script that's another thing I don't understand about how you live with yourself like, who's ever reading that script uh, ever it's so scummy like who could who could be like that creepy about it and live with yourself that's another I don't read know. this it's so good you'd be fucking surprised if they do. listen I'm a creepy just get dude. back to me I hated that I had a guy call me in for a meeting once strung me along strung me along then called me in for a meeting I went in there and meet for a manager and he was like okay yeah it's like uh, thanks for coming in so listen I don't I don't think we can work with you uh, we're kind of full right now I was like what and then he starts talking about the reasons why and, and what the business is going and what I'm just tuning out now at this point and I'm just looking around this office and I'm like why am I here why am I in Beverly Hills just, just at tell 10 30 on a Tuesday I should be in bed I woke up just tell me you could have told me this on the fucking phone. Don't fun. call the meeting. It's like having to come in to get fired. Yeah, can you call me in and get validated parking? I went to Walk 30 out. Of those. How was your meeting? Uh, uh. I went to 30 of those. <sighs> why am I here? <laughs> I told that Shandra. She was like, I don't know why he would have called you in just to that, say that. Dog, I remember when I first got here, there used to be a place on Santa Monica Boulevard that did comedy and the industry was all over. It wasn't Largo. There was one over where, uh, oh my God, downstairs. So it was Largo, and then there was something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. But that, that was the big alt room. That was the big alt room. Luna this Lounge. Is Luna Lounge. This is 98. I only went there the once. The word on the street was, if you blew up Luna Lounge, you walked out. That's it. You're in. You at least had a development deal for your deal. own show to make. But it was getting at least on. Right. It was getting on. That was a motherfucker. So unless you knew somebody who could... Like, there was one kid who get you on, but he torment you. He did 55 minutes in between you. Oh, really? So it was him, and he put four comics on, but the show lasted three hours uh -huh. because he did 30 minutes in between everybody. Because different people booked every night. Right, because he wanted to get a deal. And he was horrible. He had big ears. He was hard. I forget oh. what the fucking guy's name was. Who was it? I forget what his name was. But then Joe was, Lozon. Then there was a place <laughs> on Santa Monica that was like a restaurant. Oh, these jeans. And it was, I got the same thing with these shorts on today. And it, was it. and it was Wednesday nights at 10 o'clock. And I left there one day. And the next time I get to the store and Scott Day is there. And Scott Day comes downstairs and he goes, hey, man, 
these people came by today. They want to sign you. I go, Scott, are you serious? He goes, they're fucking great. They're great. They used to be a soap fact, a soap opera, <laughs> oh, a so soap fact, opera soap factor, agency. Yeah. yeah. But now the they guy over you? there left Warner Brothers. And he's got all these people. I forget who was their big guy at the time. Pierre uh -huh. was over there. It was an agency. Like Pierre. Yeah, but now they're huge. Now it's like that they, they merged with somebody right, else. Right, right. So I go okay. down there. Oh, we loved you the other night, the Laugh Factory, or at that place, not Luna Lounge. All right, okay. uh, we'd like to come see you again. Hold on one second. Those days, all you had to do was call Scott Day. Scott, I'm here in Joe's you office. You showcase they put you on. Boom, 9.30, 9.30, 9.15, 9.05. You got a primo spot. Yeah, then you it start, set you up to win. The comedy you, store set you up to win. Then you start, no one could bump you. They didn't start by your you name. Start, then you start doing fake pot. Uh, yeah, showcase. Mike Young was the king Mike of that. Mike Young was the king of that. He called in for showcases 19 straight weeks. <laughs> like, Mike Young, we're going to take away the system from everybody. Yeah. And, well, your guy keeps not showing by accident. Get out of here. If your guy's not here, you can't go on stage. So they came to see me. This time they brought like six people. Yeah. Okay. I called them. What's up? Oh, we loved you. Now we got to bring uh, accounting, bookkeeping. How stressful is that? It's a fucking nightmare when all you want to do is do something. Because if you go to an agent, they tell you, we can't sign you. Let me see your reel. I got no reel. <laughs> I got no agent. Okay, we go get a reel and come back. How am I going to get a reel if I got no fucking agent? So you, it was a catch-22. So all I wanted to do was get a theatrical agent. Mitzi was getting me spots. I wanted a fucking theatrical agent. I was here like four or five months. This was it. I went to Ross and bought a shirt, yeah. a tie. This was it. They were fucking huge. This guy had just left Warner Brothers. The assistant had left fucking CAA. This guy had left this. They were a powerhouse. They were on a, you know where they were? Across the street from where you lived, upstairs. That's where they were. All right? When you oh, really? Remember the thing they knocked down where you yeah. lived? Across the street this way. Once they knocked that down, it was such a good view after that. Yeah, this way. When you went this way and you went like uh, 30 feet, you had to go through a patio thing and you went upstairs. Oh, yeah. And they were huge. They hold the whole floor this age. Really? That place went under. So that, that place was went... empty for a fucking decade. So I went over there, met the whole like building. eight of them. We love you. Bookkeeping and accounting has to see you now. We had a showcase. Okay. Another showcase, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Now 14 people came. With suits right from fucking work. You want to talk about nerves? Mitzi showed up. Uh, uh, Everybody was there. Boom. I killed. Uh, they hugged me. We're going to talk uh, tomorrow. What do you think? Tomorrow, boom. Went down there, 14 people. Okay, now we, they wanted to see something else. I talked them out of that. Then there was the Christmas holiday. Then I went down to like January 20th. And they sat me down six in a conference room, offered me like Pellegrino water, <laughs> and said, you know what, we're, we can't, we're going to pass on you right now, but we're going to keep an eye on you. Oh, Cause what a fucking two-faced. We believe you're somebody to deal with in the future. We're gonna, and, you know, then deal with me now. That's like, that's like saying, like, at down. best, that's like saying, develop, build your own career, and then we'll take over. Yeah. Where it's like, no, that's I need your was. help now, and then I will stay with you later. That's what it was back then. That's what it basically fucking was. Jesus so. Christ. It was rough. It was rough, man. Nobody was signing you as an agent. Forget about uh, managers. And then I had Bobby Slayton's manager, who was fucking horrendous. Oh, my God. I was just sending her checks. Because you have to pay them 50%. Of, and of doing of, nothing. Of doing nothing. And here I am booking $900 jobs. Sending her $130. She didn't even fucking call me at the audition. Just because she was my manager. I was like, oh, my God. But it must Feigen, Feigen wanted some of Rogan's money. Oh opening for Rogan money. He's like, yeah, man, give me 10% of that shit. What? It must, no way. It, it must suck, though, for, like, managers, though. So if, like, you're a good manager and someone just gets big and leaves you right as you're about to make all your money. Yeah, but the reason they leave you is because you're most of the time you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. It ain't like you signed a giant deal and before you signed the paperwork. Like, hold on, let me fire a manager real quick so I can sign this. It ain't that. You drop them and then you start moving ahead on your own. Oh, okay. It's, like anything else, shit. it's commitment. Nineteen days. You just talked about it. That's the national commitment level. Nineteen days. So if I come here and I go, I'm going to sign Ari Shafir. We're going to make this happen. The first three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he gets on a phone, right, like a yeah. slave. He's calling everybody. As yeah. soon as he signs you, yeah. we love Ari. Oh, we love Ari. He probably will get you a tremendous audition. That last two and a half weeks. You know, I mean, days. everything will happen in like two weeks. And then the first no or the two no's he gets, if you don't get that big audition, nah, my heart's then not you're in anymore. the middle. 
But they don't just drop you there. They don't drop. They you. don't drop you there. They just go. Well, wait. We'll see what else comes. And then they just hold you for like a year, and you're like, oh, come on. Just say, look, I gave it a good push. I'm not getting a good response on you. It's kind of a fucked up way to make your living. It's, to get it a commission. is. Taking commission. Because then it's like, why wouldn't they work on people who are making them more money? Yeah, I get it. And then the worst is when you bump you have, into other clients. Because you have some. And they pull you aside and go, hey, has Nick been working for you? Like, no, you haven't heard from me neither. He sucks, bro. I'm going to get somebody else. And he'll tell you a story about another client. Did you hear what he did to Whitney? Yeah, he told Whitney he had that. And all of a sudden, three clients are talking about him. Yeah, no, like, because that's how small the community is. We see each other. So all I got to do is go up to him and go, come in for a second. Did he call you with that? Yeah. What the fuck's he thinking? Did you hear what he did to Lee? He told Lee. He was right, right, say. right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that's it. Now you got three motherfuckers. Now you got John Gotti all over again. They're going to shoot you. They're going to shoot you. And they're all talking. Your heart's they're not in talking. it. They're all talking. You used to say all the time. It's like, why am I say- Did I have an audition today? Did I have an audition this week? Then why do I keep seeing you on Facebook between the hours of 9 and 5? Why are you updating your status on Facebook when I don't have an audition? Plain and fucking simple. I don't get that shit. Pick up the fucking phone, call somebody, make a connection. Remember at the old origin? They couldn't even get us into the fucking casting director that was in his hall. Upstairs. It was down the hall. Right on Laurel Canyon there. Yeah. It was down the hall. They were both on the fourth floor. They couldn't even get you an audition on CSI Miami or, or the other one that was cast out of there. And they're like, come on, you can't get me. Just for sheer embarrassment alone of having to piss next to you every day. Wasn't the lady really a bitch there? I don't know. Origin. Yeah, that's yeah. a Lawrence one. Uh-huh. She was a bitch. She was another one that didn't She's want nice to... enough, pleasant enough. But then when they like split up, she was like, are you going to stay here? I'm like, what are you talking about? You've never gotten me any... Audi- You've never, never given me a chance. They don't even say hello. Well, and, I'm, and you know I'm friends with him. And he's changed my life. And you've never done it. Like, why would you even make this call? What a cunt you would have to be to accept me coming over there. You should be like, no, 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 no. You're his friend, and and he, you know, you, you pretty much only made money over there. We, we, no, you shouldn't come over here. But going out of the way to call, you, we, we want your money. We want your money. Please tell. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Bennett, cocksucker. What was I? Remember when they had like those yellow books? Oh shit, they had those yellow books and you could send packages away. To yellow agents. books. Oh yeah, the, at Samuel French. Ten bucks, you gotta get it. It's the only way you get an agent. Send, send out 80, 80 envelopes. They said four will come back. One will get you. This is nice. It's as good as it gets, though. <laughs> How many do you guys have? How many stars do you have? I had two and a candy. Two? And oh, my gosh. With okay. soldiers of fortune, Lee. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to tell you that shit. So, you had these yellow the, envelopes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you went to Samuel French and you paid 10 bucks. Then yeah. you went home. You yeah, the agent book. envelope, they also had a manager envelope. They separated it. They separated double their, it. Double their income. So, then some smart motherfucker had the labels. The labels. The already labels. Made up. Already mail order to already William Morris. Two. two. Gersh. Two. This place. Two. This place. So, I would go in there by the book, but shop with the labels behind the book. <laughs> shove them in. Because the labels were 1995. <laughs> so I would shop with the manager labels, but steal the agent. They would tell you which book. ones would accept submissions from non SAG, which ones were SAG only. They still have it. I have like an old Some one. Some were like looking for comedians specifically. So, is that just before the internet? Wait, yeah, before the internet. Like, I was like, why would that even be a business? It was before, before the internet operated as it did. The internet was around, but it wasn't like that. That's crazy. And yeah, people had, still had maps in their cars. That's right. Star, and then you had a. You had this fucking thing, and you sent the thing. They'd say, we were looking for comedians, character actors, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. musicians, and that's when you made a list, and you sent it to them. Eisenstadt, yeah. they're looking for character comics, people like and that. And they get us submissions. So I sent this thing to this agent. The best way to find a commercial agent. That was the best way. That was way the best way. Because all, all they look at you is their headshot. Right. And they're like, cool, yeah. They'll give you a shot with a commercial agent. They, they'll, they'll have 300 the clients. They'll have 300 clients. It's not a big deal. They don't give a fuck. They'll give you, you a shot. Ten with ten for each audition. You can get in. You'll go on for everything with commercials. So I send like twenty packages, and I get a call from three people, 
And one of them is a lady. She goes, I'd love to meet you. I go, all right, where's your office? I look at the paperwork. And I go, are you still on Sunset? She goes, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm working out of Pasadena. Oh, wait. I go, okay. I think I went to that lady. And, and there was a dump. She shared an office with another guy. There was a dog that was old. Dog, yeah, the dog, across the from the golf course. And they had tons of headshots on the floor and everywhere. I mean, the only thing they had left off opening oh their my office God. was like this. It was that's like that's hoarders. It. it was for headshots. Fucking crazy. Like they were collecting the dreams of want to be actors. They were they were just feeding off their fucking dreams. Look at their face. She called. They everybody. were just t- there was packs, stacks, and stacks packed. of hoarder headshots. Packly. I remember her telling me she could get me on a TV show in three hours. Oh, oh my God, I remember her. And sitting there going, why are you in an office in Pasadena? You couldn't wrap your head around it, but you wanted to believe. Yeah, you she wanted was that to good, believe. Lee. She was that fucking good. I'll oh, this will get me what I want to dream of. I'll be an actor or something, I guess. Is that what I'm supposed to want? It was horrid. And then it's just on the chance that you book something, she makes money. I, I don't know what chance she it was. She can get you in. It's fucking the, by all means, but, but they have phone. But the classic scam that got worked on me. No, it didn't get worked on me. She almost had me, <laughs> but I didn't go for it. Was If you listen to... Get headshots from my friend. Which one? That's what they always say. You need new headshots. Here's a, here's my recommendation. No, no, go no, to no. this person. This was... Round, when I first moved here, there was a lady who was managing Monique Marquez. Okay. Okay, decent name. She was friends with Jamie Masada. Oh, that's a great call of card. Okay. Yeah. She, was her, she pulled her talent from the Laugh Factory. Okay, so she had a couple big names. But I remember one of the people she had was Monique Mar- Marquez. So guess who signs with her in 98? Who? First Joseph moved? Coco Diaz. No, oh. Ralphie May. <laughs> okay. Ralphie May comes to town. She tells Ralphie, you're going to be a star. She's a Jewish woman from Miami. Grew up around Cubans. A lot of fucking yelling cool, and screaming. Good flavor. She was a chubby little Jewish woman yelling and screaming at the comedy store and at the So one night she calls me on the moon. She goes, I watch your set, you're filthy, but I have something for you right now, right now. I go, What is it? She goes, Here's the deal. I spoke to them already. It's a recurring role in Ari, I was not ready. What? It's a recurring role and some NBC show that obviously didn't last. And she goes, I spoke to them about you, they were You were not see ready. You. No, not at all. She goes, they want to see you at 4.30 uh, today, and they'll probably put you on 12. In those days, you you signed for 27 episodes or something. Oof. They'll put you on 13 or 27 episodes. I have them on hold right now. And and she's calling you. You want to believe me. so bad. She's calling a guy, not Correct. one party. He goes, wait a minute. I've never shot anything in my life. My life. I, and they want me because... At Why that, would you not think of someone else? At that point, I shot a commercial for Taco Bell. Yeah, with the dog? And maybe something else. But no, there was no hope of me. I had one line or something. God. Basketball. And so she said, they're on hold right she now. She goes, I got them on hold right now. All I need is your commitment. Fax me. I'll fax you a contract. You sign it and fax it right back to me. <laughs> That's so scammy. Oh, my God. And I'll, I, I will get you on this show today. You will be shooting by next week. You'll be making fifteen to twelve thousand dollars or something. I've been going. Something's not right. Ralphie's been with her for a month and nothing's happened. Right. Like she had like a little livestock of people. So I said no, and you don't know what you're missing. And then about a month later, I started hearing fucked up shit about it. That she would charge her clients to money be- for postage. Oh So my at the God. end of the month, you got a bill from her. That's part of your 10%. That was part. She was that Jewy, guys. That at the end of the month, she would send you a bill for the phone call she made, office cost. So you would get like a $100 bill from her every fucking month, which when you're a starving comic is a lot. And I'll never forget that Ralphie comes up to uh, the store one night really depressed. This is how I met Ralphie. This is the conversation that changed our lives. When Ralphie moved to Los Angeles, he was a complete different person. Let's get this out of the way. He was completely different. He was from the South. He was shy. He didn't say much. But when he went on stage, he was a ball of energy. But he was big and fat. He was 700 pounds yeah. when he moved to L.A. You see this old picture of him, and it's round. It's, it's amazing. But he was a sweetheart. He lived at Doug Stanhope's apartment, the one that Doug Stanhope gave up with the other kid from Alaska. That's the apartment he took over. So he had just moved to this town. So it's a lonely Sunday night at the store. It's like December. And Ralphie's 
gloomy Gus. He's got a long face. Yeah. And, and he comes up to me. And he goes, "How you doing, cow cow? I have a, <laughs> I have a problem." No, in those days, he used to call me Mister Diaz. This really? is how bad he was, Ralph. I go, "What are you talking about? It's Coco, Joey, whatever." Mister Diaz. <laughs> Mister Diaz. What the fuck are you talking about? So he's telling me <laughs> how James Masada wants to sign him, but uh, he feels guilty because he's being he's been managed by the other lady. And right away, I knew the lady was a well, I, I knew she was a scammer, and I, and I wanted to tell him, but this kid's so sweet, he's not going to even right. understand what the fuck I'm saying, you know. So he's telling me the whole story. Also, he goes, you know, she's dying of cancer, and I go, no, I didn't know that. He goes, she's dying of cancer. So I don't want to dump her on her deathbed. He goes, so what do you think? If I sign with Jamie and go to Montreal, do I stay with her? I go, that bitch got one foot in the grave, one in the banana peel. <laughs> Call her up right now and launch that motherfucker. And I'll never forget that he was such a sweetheart of a kid. Yeah. I did it really crazy. And he just looked at me. He kept, he, he wanted to cry. But the comic in him just let loose. <laughs> And he was always different towards me after that. <laughs> Coco, that was crazy when you told me. <laughs> Did you find These her? guys I mean, come yeah. and they're young and, and they're also religious and like, well, I've never even seen or heard anyone talk like this. It was crazy, guys. He fired her and signed with Jamie. Wow. And then he she... thought you're supposed to be like, well, she that's died. a young lady. She died and he was She broke. did die. And now Ralphie sends money to the family today. No way. Ralphie bought her something. I know if you pull Ralphie aside... Ralphie bought her a tombstone, something. Ralphie did something because she was Ralphie's first manager. She didn't do anything. And she, but she put him in front of somebody. Okay, she well, that, then she did, do something. Then she did do something. She did something. Maybe. You know Ralphie. Ralphie's dying to give you his fucking money. Yeah. So uh, Ralphie gave me a nug once the size of a fucking, it was the size of one of those scented candles for your place. What? Yeah. And he goes, he goes look at this, look at this. And that was why I was just getting into weed. And I was like, wow, that's like a really big nug, man. And I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, cool. And then I gave it back to him. like, no, that's for you. What? No, no. You got, no, no, I'll take it, man. I can't do the impression. He's <laughs> taking care of I'm like, of why? Me. He goes, because Joey Diaz gave me a nug once. He only had two. So I'll always take care of him. I'll take care of everybody. <laughs> he, uh, he's taking care of me since the he got She's never with that weed. She's never with that weed. Since that <laughs> conversation, Ralphie May has taken care of me one way or another. I'm dead serious with you people right now. He took care of me till, I gotta say, five years ago. And he's still, all I gotta do is call him. All I gotta do is call him. My, my tires blew up once. I called him, I go, Ralphie, I go on the road for three weeks. He's like, no need to call me from the gas station. He goes, put the guy on the phone. It was two tires that blew. Ralphie bought me four, got the suspension fixed. Huh. You know, Ralphie's one of those motherfuckers. He ain't just gonna stop at two tires. You know, you know that. <laughs> there was a year where there was a year where Ralphie would get off the road, get in the rental car in LAX, drive to my house. Before he'd even go to his house, we'd go to the pot store. <laughs> buy weed. And he'd buy a quarter pound of <laughs> Matt's OG, a quarter pound of a purple, quarter pound? Quarter pounds. In their prime. In their prime. Ralphie May is was like the Michael Jordan of weed. He was like in his prime. It's arguably the big, the biggest tolerance of any comedian of all time. He was smoking eighth before breakfast every day. Could you hang with him, Joey? Yeah. Oh yeah. We used to sit there and down have for sessions, down. sessions, and then he cook. And then he cook. Oh, I mean, he would cook. He, he cared would cook. so much about cooking. Both you guys. Whenever you gave me a food recommendation, when I said I was gonna move to Poinsettia. He goes, "You got to go to the walk." Gigantic portions, really delicious. Yeah, and I yeah. looked at you, that's when you were fat. And I was like, I'm going to listen to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> on this subject, I will be at the Which walk was the walk? Week. Hoy's walk. Yeah, it was right on the corner of Poinsettia. I just told you it's gone now. It's gone now. I think it's a falafel Bell place Rose now. And Poinsett- yes. That was the place I turned you on You could order a single combo, oh, a double no. combo, or a triple combo. Oh, and my if you God. were a triple combo, it was two and a half meals Lee, for Lee. $13. Lee, it was crazy. Lee, I don't know. You, Lee, it was, it was like going great, to... Great. What great. was the place? What's good the noodles place? and good rice. Rice and noodles, both, please. Thank what's you. The, what's the Chinese place next to Big Wang's? Oh, oh Pan Express. It was, this place was like a, a fucking family-owned Pan Express type deal, and they didn't give a fuck. Wait, where place were we just talking about? The Chinese place on Melrose. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we used to get soup. 
Yeah, it was good. Everything oh was God. good there. It was spicy. Oh they give you the spicy right. Oh. I'd eat as much as I could there, then take the rest on the one you block walk. Home. You gotta take it home. Back to 916 North Poinsettia. We had a back alley, and I had neighbors in the, next to me that would fuck, and I'd put my glass to the wall, and I would listen to them fuck right by my bed. And eat Chinese food? Yeah, and I'd pretend to go take trash out to the alley where the, where the garbage cans were so I could look in their window and look at them. I got too scared. I never got a good look. They fucked all those guys. <laughs> that guy told me he had a he had a uh, he used to book a lot of commercials. I booked my first one while I was there, and he was like, oh, "I used to book a lot of commercials." And I was like, "Oh, cool." It's like you still doing? That? I go, "No, nah, I work at like a wine cellar now or something." He's like, "I kind of ran out of money," and I was like, "Ooh, all right, lesson: <laughs> don't spend your money." Do you have to like take acting classes to get commercials? Fuck no! Well, you gotta you get just... some glasses, grow a beard. In the old day, wear a wristband. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you gotta look it. the part, bro. I was gonna tell you, you were interested in it last week. For yourself. You I was like, maybe I should. You in my should. Spare Let's call time. Aqua. Let's All take right. it down to Aqua. Get you a little. Oh, you, got, you got any roly poly categories left? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. They'll love you though. You'll do great. You'll do great. You know what? A guy like you will shoot three commercials a year. I knew some because Asian kid who would just crash auditions and book them. And book them. And because he was so goofy, he would go in there and be like, we love that guy. You're going to book three commercials a year. I know for a fact. Make, you have 7000 on each commercial. You're going to get SAG insurance. You get insurance. I just qualified insurance. again. After insurance. I don't it's, know what their insurance is like. What's it like? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't fuck with you. That That's bad. amazing now. See... Why, not, why I thought they joined the unions? Why am I not getting the joint? What the fuck? What the f- come on, man? Guys, you know why are you making it harder? I don't on want us? to get started on another fucking topic here, but this is what's going right now. Used to be thirty grand. You get Plan One insurance, no no charge, free, one hundred percent free. I, I love thirteen grand. Open you made criticism. That. I love open criticism. And I appreciate it. I take them all like a champion. I think about them, and I'll give you my explanation or my apology or my agreement on what subject we had. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, my wife and I were talking. We're talking about something. She goes, you know, she goes, at times you're fucking paranoid of these people. And I go, you're talking about all the people who fuck. I go, we just finished a conversation about how you told me that the biggest, you have to check your doctor bills now. Because they'll just charge you more. Always check your doctor bills. You're like, you've billed me three times for this. The last time you said that's the last charge. And now you're billing me again. Why am I, why she am I dealing with this She was just telling me this. She was just telling me this in a casual conversation. It's not like I made this up. I go, you were just telling me. She goes, yeah, but that's they just They have dumb thing. bookkeepers. I go, you ever met the thing? girls when you check in? You think they're great at fucking Excel? I go, You think they're thing? awesome at it and they don't make mistakes ever? Well, somebody says, excuse me, I've been here for 35 minutes. What? Well, well, when you go to American Airlines and you put your suitcase down, they want another $100. Yeah. For, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's time. People understand. You just call, I'm not even saying nothing bad. If you call AT&T today and go, listen, I found the better deal or whatever, they want a buck and a quarter. We're always I just had to fucked. pay 160 to, to leave DirecTV. To leave them. And you're like, are I you feel, kidding me? I your shit feel, never worked? And I don't so I'm leaving, you're billing me? I it never feel worked. that as an American consumer, I get fucked at, at one level or the other. Every fucking day, whether I'm buying, well, not gas now. Verizon I, did that, Verizon no, DSL. I, I fucking, a month and a half of calling them over and over and over again. The shit never worked. They sent three people. And they're like, well, we want 100 bucks for the time. What the fuck are you talking about? You had our box for a month, though. I called four times a week. You should fucking pay me for my time. Tell them about the San Diego Charger ticket. Oh, the oh I heard about that. Hub. So people get pissed. My wife's like, you know, you have a right to leg. I go, every day I talk to somebody who gets ripped off by a corporate somehow, I had to way. shit on them, and then enough people, they go, well, we're sorry. Fuck, we looked at what happened. We were really sorry. I'm like, what happens if I didn't fucking have a podcast? Then what you would have done? You just fuck somebody over? Build them with 360 bucks for tickets that weren't even real. You go back, say, sorry, nothing we can do. You see how much Give them a hundred dollar, hundred dollar refund. They're like, we'll give credit you a hundred. Credit me all of it. Why am I making this call? You faceless corporation. You just keep taking us, taking us. We're going to fight back. Hoard your guns. You're going to need them. Tom Hoard just, those guns. My wife gets mad at me. And then what about the ticket company that charges like a $19 service 19 fee? but you see the Rogan tickets are. 26 bucks a piece. Two tickets. We paid $89. Hoard your guns. $89? So it was 29 So it was 60 bucks, But it was a fee of $29. Each one has a separate service fee. Each one. And I've talked to the people at the fucking... At the, at the ticket place. And they go, well, it's the venues. It's them charging it. I was like, well, then do a better job of publicizing who's doing it. 
Because you look like you have a bad fucking eye. You look like you got a black eye like you're doing it. Two service charges? The, the service charges when you actually speak to someone. That's the fucking service. You're not doing service. That's what they do now. Some Two charges? <laughs> and it's one click? You gotta be kidding me. So you buy four tickets. You gotta pay 14 bucks on each one? For what's that? What does that mean, service charge? Is there any other way to do it? Thank God I'm not the only person that feels this way. Service I charge. I thought it was just me. Paul Jam was saying it 20 years ago. We weren't listening. We're calling them dumb hipsters. The I told him the story. They're the robbing day. you. I They're did. robbing you, people. I told him I, the that story money doesn't go to the comic or the fucking musician. That doesn't go to them at all. That's just, They're already getting paid, though, the venue. They're selling alcohol. They're selling posters. They're selling... They, 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 service? And, and what service? Go, when, we, when we go in there with a t-shirt, if they sell a t-shirt, they want 15% of something. Yeah, they like get this. some of that too. That's what? why you're like, how come... Oh, these these comics, are, these whatever, are, musicians are greedy. They're charging 30 bucks a t-shirt. They get percentage of the gross or the net, whatever the big one is. So you pay seven bucks to get them printed and then they take eight. And then you're going to raise your price. You're going to make it $2 a shirt. Then what's the point? Why do you get a cut? You know what Kid Rock does? He splits it down the middle. Everything. Liquor sales. T-shirt sales. Ticket prices. He goes, you can't charge more than 20 bucks because my, my fucking audience, Justin tells me all this, my audience won't come. It's a good show, but it's not a fucking $75 show. But it's a real good show for 20 But I know they're drinkers, and I know that's more valuable to you than fucking, you know, Tori Amos that doesn't sell any booze, sells some fucking Depends, and that's it. That depends. <laughs> Tampax. <laughs> so he goes, I want a 50-50 cut. And they're like, all right, it's worth it. But what the service charge? That's just them taking it. We add more. What's, why 14 and not 12 sometimes? It's just a random charge? I what the fuck to, are you talking about? You didn't do it. I just had to pay because there are no more seats on a flight and I had to sit in row four. I had to pay 30 bucks. Because there are no more seats. You had to pay extra. To sit in like, not even first class, just like, Higher up, or they cram coach. you in the back. You ever see that empty in the front and the economy plus empty? We're all crammed in the back. Like, can we just spread out? There's no one in any of those rows. Nope. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to the people who paid. But nobody's paying. Why is there right classism now. right now? Why are you forming classism? <laughs> Fine, if somebody's in a row, let them have the whole row. But the empty rows, let us go there. It's like Hotel Rwanda here. Come on. You're like Moses of the earth. <laughs> Set us free. Hoard your guns. We're definitely going to victim. Hoard your again. guns. The I'm more surprised. they need, the more they fucking get in business with the government. Those corporations, you know why you can make another hundred bucks? Get the government to fucking look the other way. I'm surprised. They change laws. They're knocking on the fucking door right now. Hoard <laughs> your guns. The other day during a Josh Host podcast, a black lady did, did knock on the door and I almost panicked because I was still high from the podcast with you or something. So did you open the door? Yeah, she just wanted to go to the bathroom, but it was a black lady. <laughs> I was like, oh. Because Felipe Esparza went crazy one day and a black lady got his kid out of our last <laughs> office. <laughs> How high are you, Lisa? Pretty fucking high. You want to smoke some more hash? Not really. I know. My mouth is so dry. Because I'm super high. I got a little bit more hash left in this fucking thing. Oh, you should pound this. I got some blonde hash. That's what was in the joint. A little blonde hash. <laughs> really? That's what's in the joint? You motherfucker. It tasted funny. Sure. <laughs> Toast what the fuck me. What you think you're dealing with? A little blonde hash. I got it so high. Look at it. Check it out, people. Buy a asuka. <laughs> oh my god, my nose is so jammed I can't even smell it. So good. Take away for this. A little blonde hash. A little oh, wow. platinum motherfucking uh it's platinum. It's platinum uh, Girl Scout cookies. Just, oh, Girl Scout cookies always good. This is tremendous. Always good. No. Listen, that their weed over at Sunset uh Herbal Center where I go. They, it's great weed, but it's a little moist at times. Yeah. So I got to go home and put it in computer paper and hide it under the fucking printer. Yeah. And let it dry a little bit. Like sometimes if I got a lot of weed, it dries overnight. So when I wake up in the morning, it's nice and puffy. It's like a fucking bomb. Like this morning, that shit was dry. I put it in the bomb. I put it in the pipe. Bam. I was gone this morning. I ate Cheerios and motherfucking an egg and a piece of wheat. Well, like, you told me, like, <laughs> the names don't really matter. Like, one place someone can call something something, and right, right, right. it can be different. Like, shouldn't they make it so it's the same everywhere? Like, so you actually know what you're getting by the name? Is she getting fucked in there? <laughs> Who's yelling? It sounds like it. It's just a Russian lady who makes clothing. Uh, no, that's what... 
we think as I'm humans. Really soundproofing in this place. We think is, <laughs> that's how we think, you know. But it's not really like that. People sell it according to their market. So what? Uh, weed names. So if they have a lot of weed, like whatever Enigma OG is in the valley, yeah. Enigma OG at your favorite the, store yeah. in Maui was going to be two different stores. Uh, yeah, that should be that should be the same. No, Maui Wow is always the same. It might be different grows of the same, but it's the same type of high. Listen, man, I've talked to a lot of these owners. A lot of these owners oh, no. will say that this comes in, but people won't buy that name. People just won't buy that name. Oh, really? So they just so rename it something they like? a name that sells for their market. You know, uh, whatever's in Santa Barbara is different than somewhere else. Yeah. See, now we're... F they got the TV on. I don't <laughs> she care. put her TV in on Drown Us Out. I don't know. Don't she put her TV in on Drown Us Out. That's all right. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? The police are probably coming because hoard your guns. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that far from the police station. The ATF is going to bang on the door. <laughs> yeah. Let me give some shout outs here. Oh, it's to Rock Mastrangelo. Is the office under Diaz? Aaron Blood, Corey Moe, Corey Leiter, Ookie Spooky, Ookie David Spooky. Sienz, Ashley Sotelo. And Kyle Arellano. I love you, motherfuckers. As you can tell, we're a little stoned to the gills. Spooky Spooky's in Austin. Smoked, She's really cool. We smoked a hash joint. We did some uh, 50 milligram edibles. What were they? Here are the best stories I have for the year. What you, part? Ali Sadiq, has a really good one. Miss Pat crushes it. Miss Pat crushed it. Kreischer, that was Comedy Central's favorite one. They all love that, that one the most. Um, Renazisi did a really good one. Cordry. I did a couple good ones. Cordry looked funny. Yeah, he was. He was handling really well. He really prepared really hard. He's one of the non comics we had. He really fucking worked hard at it. Now, was that show Children's Hospital his? He's on it. I don't know if it's his completely. I don't know. It might be his completely. Yeah, I think it's not. his because he wrote. He, he was very, you know, that's the first time ever somebody sent a note to my agent. With Children's Hospital? Yeah, he sent a note to my agent. Like, listen, man, Joey came in prepared, blah, blah, blah. It was really, really impressive. Yeah, it was one of those jobs. I was like, I don't want to do it. The money blows. But at the end of the week, the money was great because it's all overtime. The initial is the oh, deal right. they have is a weird deal. They go, it's two ninety nine for three days. And you're like, two ninety nine for three days? That's not even you. He goes, yeah, but after eight hours, it's all overtime. So the second and the third day, it's all great. If you shoot three days... You get twenty hours of overtime, which right. you got, I ended up getting like ninety-two hours of fucking overtime because you're there from six in the morning to twelve at night. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's cool for a fifteen-minute show. But that's what we're saying. How like you need your agent to believe they believe in you for two weeks and it's over. You get a call from someone saying, "Hey, this guy's really good. You should fucking, you know." Well, they're more likely to like keep going, keep helping you. That's really helpful. Listen, the agents that suck are the ones. That <laughs> oh my god, are the, ones, are the ones that don't believe in you. Are the ones that don't believe. <laughs> look at look, look at these red. Are the ones that? I mean, where's the Israeli flag? Is it, it better not be on the fucking floor. It's not on the floor. People have died from the Israeli flag, and it can't be on I'm the fucking it. floor. I would never let that happen. I would never let that happen. I forgot I had it on, though. I like these little afternoon <laughs> podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Why do you normally do it? At 8 o'clock at night. I'm not an Israeli spy this way, and I pull out my Uzi. I like that. It's fucking insane. So what do you got this weekend? You home this weekend again? Home this weekend. Feel good to be in LA? Weather nice? Yeah. So Benji had this dog. He left me this dog. So it's like, you know what? Do you have to take care of it? Yeah, but it's got... I've always wanted a dog, but I couldn't have it. Because one, I don't have a backyard. You almost kind of have to, sort of. And then two, I go on the road a lot. What yeah. am I going to do? But this is just for three months. So it's like, it's like a rental dog. All right. And he's got a little backyard with a doggy door. So you're gonna take it on the road? No, I'll just give it to someone else when, when I'm on the road. Oh, okay. Do you like him? What's his name? I just call him I, like dude and stuff. Is he cute? Yeah, he's pretty you cute. Take him for walks. Yeah, it's nice. A different look. Yeah, he's great. He gets he goes, oh, every time I walk towards the door, oh, my God, my God, they get so excited. When I come back, they're excited to see you. I miss having a dog. <laughs> Doesn't do shit though. Benji hasn't trained him to do fuck all. I won't fetch. Won't do anything. He barks at other dogs, small dogs. He goes crazy, angry. But it's pretty cool when he's inside. He'll sit on your lap and shit. 
Girls must like it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Girls seen it yet. That's nice, man. It's, it's a nice. different taste to you. I mean, I know you like New York, but I got to tell you something. New York but, uh, this oh, time of the yeah. year. No, that's what I was going to say. I've been tough. walking the dog with right. my shirt off in fucking middle of January. Shorts. I called my buddy on Saturday. I told him it was 82 degrees. He didn't believe me. He said it was full of shit. Shorts <laughs> and no shirt. 82 degrees on Saturday. It's pretty beautiful great. California. Were you watching the like, <laughs> football games yesterday? Seattle? Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Like, it's too And rainy. then New England, do you want to be there? No. And that no. was just rain. It wasn't even snow and, and hail and cold sleep. wasn't in New England. It was 50. No, it wasn't it was, bad. It got it was, down to like 40s later in the game. That's still cold when you're sitting out there for three hours. It doesn't get rain. like that here. Lower as it gets here is 50s at night. And that's... Uh, well, I just turned my heat on. 40, 40. Dirty in Burbank two weeks oh, really? ago. Yeah, we had, we had like two weeks. Oh, and look was, how everyone talks about it. Oh, my God. I had to turn my heat on. Two weeks ago, it froze. I never turned my heat on in and out. It's the greatest. On, I had to put my heat on in the mornings for a couple of days. It was just freezing. Oh, fucking freezing. But, but no, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm so glad to be back here now. Fuck yeah. Dog, the East Coast, the winter. Can't wait to start seeing the pictures of the blankets of snow and slush and just like. <sighs> when do you go back? April. Okay. It it'll, could. And it'll still be cold. It was this year. It was still cold. They hadn't had cleavage day yet. It was still fucking. Oh, fuck. It was like cold coat weather. It is like, kind of like the perfect arrangement because I I miss the East Coast. Great. East Coast. East Coast from like end of March until. I want to say maybe early August because it gets super hot, but you can even stay through August into October. They got this broth place now that Tate that told me about. It's fucking bone broth. They boil it down. Where? Like 12th and 1st. Okay, New York City. Yeah, Brodo. He said it's like the healthiest thing. I, and I fucking, oh, they get so much fun shit there. And you can go to so many cities like really close. Like you go from Boston to New York to Philly to Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By train sh- and shit. Two-hour buses that it costs like 15 bucks. All right, relax. We're not Mexicans. You, you, you don't take buses in New York? Well, not, oh, not, in New York, I do. You're right. Yeah, not not, about it. not the city buses, but like Boston to New York buses. <laughs> I've taken buses here now, and it really is a lot of Mexicans. <laughs> they were right. It's my first buses I ever took here. What the fuck are you doing? A little ball itch. I'm trying to <laughs> <show>. <laughs> oh, oh. Jesus. I got shorts on. I had a little nut there. Joey, t- Joey did a tour on a bus. The what? You did tours on Greyhounds, you said. I did, yeah. You I just did. toured around the country. I used to fly to New York, get off. My friends would pick me up. And then I'd go out of Port Authority in New York City. Yeah. You could basically go around the fucking world. I'm telling you right now. You go to Port Authority, go up to Greyhound, and go, look, I want to go around the world. You give that lady 10 minutes, she'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. She'll figure it out, dog. Uh-huh. They'll take you. You know, a lot of t- when I was a feature act or like headline D rooms or C rooms, you know, I would go to New York, and as a comic, when you're a feature, you're not looking to pay $60 a night for a hotel. You're no. looking to crash on somebody's floor or whatever. Yeah. And most of the times, I go back east, and my I buddies would answer the phone. I call them. They go, I'm down the shore. I didn't leave a key for you. You know, and I go, fuck it. Let's say I had to be in Dallas on Wednesday, and I was in New York on Monday. I call, I call Graham and go, what's it cost? We have an express for $90. I was going to fly on there for 400 bucks. I got nothing to do but kill time. So you just okay. slept on the on the bus for three days? It wasn't a, oh, You can get from Dallas to New York in 24 hours on the Grand oh, really? Express. You just sleep on the bus for one day? 24 hours here. You know, they let you off for two hours. You oh, stretch. Right, right. You take a shower at <laughs> one place. It's a fucking nightmare, but it's, it's not going to kill you. Right. I've heard of people taking seven days on a flight. J.F. Harris does that now. They had the, the, the mega bus. If you get one of the first, it's a dollar. Yeah. If you get one of the first couple things, and so he's on it, he's on it, waiting for it to come on sale, trying to get that dollar so he can save money on the What's road. What's the mega bus? I don't know. And they have just a bunch of different bus companies now. That like, there's one here that goes from LA to Vegas. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Shivers. <laughs> And what is like a party uh, bus or something? No, no, it's just a cheap. Uh, smoke. And, the, and the fucked up thing is, is a lot of these smaller companies because there's Greyhound, but then a lot of these smaller companies are owned by Greyhound. Oh right, they own like three Subsidiaries. or four subsidiaries. All the ticket companies are owned by the same people. So, Ticketmaster buys them all. So then it, you, you see, so like, you're like, oh, it's it's, an, it's a different company that could be that can be for a little bit, and Ticketmaster grabs it. You're sticking into the corporation, but not really. Ah, uh, but uh, they're cool. I mean, I took them. I, I couldn't imagine doing what you're doing. I, I once looked, and it took two days to get from here to Boston. Like, two and a half days on a Greyhound. I just looked to see what, it, what road it would How take. How much? Like, 170. Not bad. Wow. 
So I think it was a while ago. Could you do two days with no shower on the bus? You yes. asked. Two days with no shower. You, but you said two days. I would never want to sit next to you for two days. Two Either days. one of you. I don't want to sit next you to anybody. Stinky for two motherfuckers. Days. You, two days. You don't think you'd uh, stay for two days? Oh, I would smell so bad. Yeah. I smell bad now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine two days? Just sitting Monday morning oh. to Wednesday afternoon with no shower, your ass sitting. Your legs are fucking rigatello. <laughs> right, yeah. They're fucking. And then what are you eating? Gone. Yeah, not You're good. eating garbage. Yeah, French fries at a truck stop and then move on. Oh, my God. I, and I did it. That's why I'm, you know, I don't think I went two days without a shower. You know me. I'm anti fucking dirty asshole. Well, you could because you can miss a bus and just take a later bus. I did. I, man, it was rough, but I fucking pulled it off. I don't know how. And I would go from Toronto in those days all the way to. Atlanta, Georgia. I took an Amtrak one time. Toronto to Georgia. From Miami to Atlanta, Georgia. Fuck. Amtrak would be fun, though. I like Amtrak. Amtrak. I like trains. I take them in Canada sometimes. It's just really expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, I think the it's way, way more expensive than you think it'd be. It's, it's like, almost comparable they, with the airlines. Because they yeah. fuck you at every level. Okay, see, they don't. They, well, how much for the ticket? One fifty nine. Oh my god, American Air is two twenty nine. I'll save eighty dollars. Well, then you gotta take the cab to the fucking airport. Then they try to take the cab. That's exactly. 40. Then you get on the train, and they could upgrade you. The upgrade cost. Oh, you want to sit with six people you don't know, or you can sit in the chair point fucking north, looking at a TV. That. But cost. even that first class is not even good anymore. What in the planes? Yeah, when they upgrade you, like this ain't fucking luxurious. This ain't. This is what like regular flying used to be. United charges for TV. This yeah, charges for TV. Yeah, JetBlue gives it to you free, but now they're charging for bags. Well, oh, well, yeah. Well, most places give it to you for free, but then United canceled me out of Vermont. I had to drive. I had to miss my friend's wedding and drive to Albany to get back here. They should pay you for that. They should. I had to pay more to my rental company. They should pay for all that shit and pay you for your trouble. The rental car company wouldn't like. Why couldn't you just they drop a car off? Them. They charge you with everything. If you say, "Oh, yeah. I can't make that flight. I gotta go later." Go well. We gotta make a change of change change of ticket fee. Seventy five dollars. One hundred fifty dollars. I got that travel insurance once. Yeah. Last year. Did it work? No. What? It was snowing. That huge storm. That, that, what? That huge storm that hit New York. Joe, remember you were calling me. Oh, your god! A humongous storm hit New York. So we left an expensive hotel and paid a bunch of money. I bought a bus ticket and a train ticket, and we got on the last train out of New York. And I called the uh, insurance thing. I'm like, oh, look at it. It's not for weather. It's for some, of course, something that it's never happens. It's not for weather. Oh, it's for, well, like, your mom has to get cancer or something? I don't know. Something stupid. But it's, oh, it doesn't cover weather? I don't think so. Oh, it's just it should be for anything. I think, it was, I, I think it was like 25 bucks. Yeah, but you're never going to use it. It's like insurance at the blackjack table. It's a shitty bet. Yeah. Only suckers get that. Fucking suckers and Asians. I'm telling you, man, that's fucking ridiculous. You can't, you can't even use your insurance. You're selling that knowing full well you're not getting the car companies too. Twenty five bucks a day. My car. I wait for the best deal for nineteen ninety nine. Then you're gonna hit me with twenty five a day for insurance. My car insurance just went down you from three hundred dollars a month to one fifty because I had my old apartment. Three people went into my car. Yeah. I was paying three hundred a month for like three years. Three hundred a month. For you, for you may as well not it. even have it. I know. You may as well not even have it. I'm paying 300 a month right now for health insurance. We used to get free insurance, Joey Diaz. If you made thirteen thousand dollars, we would get no. In- we wouldn't have to pay a dime. We wouldn't have to pay a dime when we got there. Was no copay when we got to the doctor. Uh, Everything was free if we made thirteen thousand dollars. Are you just laughing because now you have to make thirty five thousand dollars, <laughs> and you got to pay fucking uh, copays, hundreds of dollars a month, and then copays, and it's getting more and more expensive. My girlfriend just went to And they would say, oh, glass, everybody has it now. <laughs> but they won't change the fuck. How is that legal? How is any of that legal? I just want Board to- your guns. <laughs> <laughs> and I need them so soon. I'm telling you, the day will be honest before you know it. I just went with Paula to get God. a prescription. They wanted to charge her $900 for one prescription. $900? $900. Does she have insurance? She does. What? It was 900 because it was like... It was, it was it was a cosmetic. What are paying for? Why is this more expensive than it was last time? Oh, so new rules pay. flipped around. We sent you we sent you notice in the mail. So yeah, but what are you talking about? Pay three hundred dollars. How is this legal? You have insurance and you're still paying. You have insurance. That means you don't pay anything. That's what insurance means. What a star. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it, it, the new insurance is expensive, and 
The fucked up thing is, a lot of places don't take it because apparently all but new insurance why, why now, give it to him? all insurance now is under Obamacare, and a lot of those Obamacare. people don't want to take it. No, sorry, we can't give you mental health anymore. No, I know you were suicidally depressed six months ago, but we can't give you uh, uh, mental health anymore because the rules changed around. We have to offer it to everybody. We can't, it's not cost effective, so sorry. What less, about those? Less, less insurance. What about insurance people who have to deny people getting Fucking paid for their cancer treatment Obamacare. and then knowing they die? Wait for Jared Loeffner to go into your offices and see what happens. Oh, my God. What did we go wrong today, people? <laughs> this was a nice American show. <laughs> Lee's paying three hundred a month for insurance. I believe you know, in but, America. There's gonna be so know, many but, angry comments on this you, video. I believe in America. <laughs> We're gonna have like a whole bunch of Arabic comments. <laughs> <laughs> people that are the avatars of the Palestinian flag. <laughs> oh. oh my God! Listen to me. I am so fucking stoked right now. America, you they keep not billing you. They keep that. billing you. Oh, we can step in. These fucking stars ain't bad, you know what I'm saying? Stars are good, you're right. Yeah. Cool high. Yeah. How you doing, Lee? What are you thinking about right now? What are you going to go eat? Nothing. I ate before this because I know it's going to be really high. So and it kind of helped. But you didn't go to the gym today. Not yet. So, not, yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I go every day. Do you really? Yeah, I lost 80, so I, I've lost 81 pounds. Let me go with you, Lee. Let, let me go with you, Lee. Right it's more about flying. Huh? Let's go after this. I can't go like this. Why not? Why not? You can go for hours like that. Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 I tried you, doing it once and I almost fell let's off. Let's go and let's tape you. Let's tape you. <laughs> let's tape you. Me and Ari will tape you. We'll be your guest today. We'll yeah. pay the fee. Oh, no, no, And we'll no, go no. over and tape you and put it on YouTube for the fucking beautiful people at home. <laughs> that would be terrifying. Can I tell you people happy Martin Luther King Day? Today? Happy Martin Luther King what Day. What the fuck happened? Nobody even mentioned black people in this Did conversation. You, oh, yeah. ESPN was kind of fucked up. They have a Martin Luther King Day game, and it's Atlanta versus Detroit. They like they, they were like selling it as a special game. What do you mean? A Martin Luther King Day bas- like oh, NBA basketball? game. What do you want to sell it as? Nobody's working. You know, black people ain't working. But why do they have to do pick like the two blackest cities? So what? Who gives a fuck? Do you look at it that way? I know. Right? Nobody's working. People have the day off. They want to watch a Martin Luther King basketball game. Let them watch a Martin Luther King fucking basketball game. They have a dream, too. They're going to probably do a special thing for Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, everybody. He died for our sins. He walked. That's a bad motherfucker right there. Somebody shot him. God bless his soul. Yeah. All right, so this week you're home. The next week you get the Denver Comedy Works. Denver Comedy Works with Mr. Steve Simone. Oh, shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a great show. That's how we do it. Yeah. I'm excited about that. You know, skiing before Breckenridge. Fucking slope it up. I have a Buffalo, New York this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, so cold. Who's better than me? Oh, the why? That's so cold. I guess Denver will be cold, too. I'm connecting flights, but I don't give a fuck, Jack. I'm going. You don't get nervous? No. Are you back to Seattle, too? I'm in Seattle in February. Did, did you get... What are we? How are we standing on that? I spoke to Ivan Celebrate about two hours ago, and I called him back. He yeah. got his machines. I got to call him back. We got to go from square one. The, the judge wants me to go back in front of him. I'm going to have to go back in front of the judge if I want to get him back. Can they lock you up? Can they go, lock it? <laughs> like, can they throw the, you know, throw the gauntlet do, down, whatever it's called? They can do whatever the fuck they want. Can they, I'm saying, can they right there like take you into custody? But wait, Joey, they'd be like the number one podcast. Oh, my God. If you, you got called into your podcast microphones all over. If, I did what? if you called into the podcast from prison and face Seattle? your charges, <laughs> when will you quit running from the Listen, law? I don't want number one podcast to be in jail. I just want to be able to come here two days a week and do my fucking podcast. Is it worth it? But leave in America. You're 50, how long ago was it? Twenty years. Twenty something. What did that? Come on, man. They don't give a fuck. What? Well, it's money. That's yeah. why it takes months for trials to happen. It's all money. Like it's all a- money. We Aaron just want to live our lives. It's all money. We're just trying to live our lives. That Aaron Hernandez trial is just oh, yeah. about to Shout happen. It yeah. happened two years ago. Yeah. And he's just going just to trial. Just wasting money. You punch in five days a week. You know how much it costs the state to keep... The state gets a certain amount of money for every day that Aaron's in jail. The state gets mm-hmm. like $55 a day. I mean, and, it's amazing. And I know he's business. guilty. And the, and the prisons are part of it, so they get money, so they yeah. want you to stay they in jail get. longer. I know he's guilty, but what about the people who might not be guilty and just don't have bail money and then have spent two years in jail for something they are innocent of? That's a great point. Blake. That's terrible. That's an excellent point. Well, what are you going to do? Voting doesn't seem to work. It doesn't. People get mad at me when I say don't vote. I mean, it doesn't work. What's the point? You keep playing their sucker game. I like just, it's better than doing nothing, but it's like it's not better. It's equal to doing nothing. You want to stall? In no. fact, it's probably worse. It's the last I time. just don't get why it's not a popular vote. That's that where it ends for me. Yeah, just everybody. Yeah, parliament oh. system. What's up, buddy? 
No, I'm just checking up on you, making sure you're still black and beautiful. Always. I got some heavy duty clothing from Buffalo. I'm excited. We get some wings with blue cheese. Nice, excellent. What's the What's a good place down like the Anchor or something? No, that's no, the no, first no. place. That's that's, the that's just place. like the tourist. Place. Oh, okay. I got some places that I'm gonna bang out. People will take me. I think I'm gonna roll on Saturday. I think. That's good. Yeah, fuck around a little bit. Come back Sunday morning. I'm ready to rock. Are you gonna roll right after the wings? No, I'm gonna roll before the wings. Okay. I'll probably roll on Friday idea. and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? What's with the questions, cock? What's with the questions? What is this, the Ten Commandments? What's with the questions <laughs> is shit, cock Zuccarini. You looking good, Lee? Well, Thank sorry, you. Sophia. So you can get my special. If you missed it, you can buy it online. You can still buy it. That's how Lee did it. Lee yeah, said he got like, I cut cables. How so. was the process for real? It was two seconds. Great. And yeah, you, you get you, bonus features, right? One, you get two bonus features. It was a little hard to figure out where I was going to download it from, but I found it. Okay. But I was all, uh, I was pretty high when I, when I bought it. <laughs> what was the down? What was the bonus feature? A little tour of the comedy store, like me of all the shit I've done around the place. Like this is the phone room. I would sleep here. That's pretty cool. They would show up. Yeah. And then the Q and A. We did that Q and A. Be embarrassed and all the comics do. Yeah, out of that, we did it right after the show. Did your Did your parents as soon as see the that? show ended? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> yeah. We just, as soon as the last show ended, we were like, I was like, thank you very much. Everybody's clapping. And then Don's just come, you can hear him at the very end. He's like, sit down. Sit down. Did you tell this guy? <laughs> so the crowd that you were a Jew. Did they know? And did that happen uh, organically? Like, before, not, not on the special, yeah, but yeah. Over time, yeah. And then people just start asking fucking ridiculous questions. It's great. Yeah, I'm happy with it. And 30 more yes go to Ari Shafir if you want to get it and it's on demand too the broadcast version is on demand but it's like seven it's like double the time for five dollars the one that you like got more than double the time yeah because yeah. the TV version was how long 40 44 42 and this was like 72 73 yeah and then all that extra shit what did they take out a few bits okay a nice public service announcement you should watch with your girlfriends and um Couple fun bits. That's cool. Yeah, we just we didn't really chop the bits up much. We just took out entire bits. That is one of the cool things that corporations do, like how Comedy Central is now selling for five dollars because a couple of the comedians made them for five. Yeah, they're like learn, learn from the fucking market. Some of them sometimes they learn. Yeah, sometimes they learn. You know, you can pay by credit card in a cab now because Uber is like. But they hate it. it. Yeah, but it's like they fight. I used to have them go. No, I'll drive you to an ATM. Cab driver. Like, no, I don't have to pay cash. I'll drive you to an ATM. Like, no, dude, I'm already where I'm going. No, no, no. You can't play. Ca- <laughs> it's the, like, the machine's broken, what, what and I doing? swipe it, and it works, and they're like, oh, I guess it works They're fucking assholes. But then, and then they try, to, they try to get the law to shut Uber down. But then it's because... So they can shit their shitty, shitty business, and they'll shove it in our faces. It, I think it's because like the taxi companies take money out of their thing for the credit card transaction, no, so yeah. everyone's getting every, fucked. Every credit card transaction, take the, they charge like 1.7%. The credit cards charge people to use it. They get interest when we don't pay it, and they charge the fucking company to have to use it. This, and they'll never go to jail a, for shit. There's always a buy. All those bankers are fine now, living in their mansions. What do you think I'm telling you about here? Everything. There was always a fucking by the way, whether it's a goddamn cab. Because the, the, the last two times I've gotten into cities, they've asked me, "Are you paying cash?" Oh yeah. And they ask you up front. Listen, what would you rather have, cash or your card? Absolutely, they lose a 1.5 percent. Plus, there's a record of the transaction. Yeah, but then That's I can the deduct it. If I can, if I can credit, I can deduct it from my taxes. You know, these fucking cab drivers have taken a tremendous hit with Uber. I they mean, should. They were every, offering a shitty service. Every fucking time you go to an airport now, there's a million cabs. When you go to Vegas, remember Vegas, you had to wait a little so bit. So many cabs now. Now, you don't wait. You That thing is moving. Yeah. You just walk. By the, time you get to that, by the time you get to that first sidewalk right there where the cabs are, there's a cab waiting for you. There's no more like, hold on five seconds. Yeah. We're waiting on and cabs. Uber just got to Las Vegas. They fought him for a while they on it. They fought him. They tried to go through the government. They tried to like, we can get to the government. Because that's the best place the for it because those stupid cab lines in Vegas. They just pick you right up. They say, oh, well, no, you can't do it from the airport because what? Get out of here, cab companies. We don't want you anymore. You can't call an Uber here at the airport. You can't. No? No, no you, you got to go off you can get dropped. You can get dropped off. You but get you dropped can't. off there, but you can't call it to there. So, yeah, that, that's a, a trick somebody said that you take a shuttle to one of the. Yeah, you can do that, places. but then it's just extra time. But, like, why? Why can't you get picked up here? You can get picked up from your friend. Because the why? taxi companies pay people. They pay they people off. That's no reason you shouldn't be able to do it. That's called lobbying. <sighs> this is not usually a political podcast. And then you just pay less money for a better service. Oh, it's clean all the time. 
Oh, you refuse to make your shit clean and you're charging twice as much? What? Why? I, tell me why. And they're not using child labor? So why shouldn't we? I don't understand. Why shouldn't we go over there and use their thing? No, no, no. They're not accredited. Accredited what? You guys are terrible drivers. Cab drivers are horrible. It's super dangerous it's, every time you get in. It's less expensive. It cost me $12 to get from Laurel Canyon right here down to the improv No tip. You don't Saturday. talk to them. Just do your shit. Where's this blitz? Just fuck, enter it, man. And you're fucking... Well, you don't have to tip an Uber? No. You can. You can extra if you want. Oh, it's already in there. But it's tip? in there. The original like, it goes to them. It goes to them. They're good. Yeah. It takes their money. They pay in for their miles and here's their money. People make good money on it, yeah. apparently. That's why they do it. Because they make good money. Tons of people. It's all these ex-cab drivers, too. Yeah, fine. Well, it's, it's also limo drivers that want to But then they get the actual okay. limo. They get the money now. Yeah, they get the money. Yeah, why do you go to your boss now? I can just work for myself. No one should be unemployed if you have a car. Exactly. Why should you? If you want to use what you have to make money, and here's the deal. If you're a bad driver, you get bad reviews, then they say, we don't want you anymore. Then they're like, you're no longer an Uber driver. Do you guys review every driver? Uh-huh. I try to. I mean, Because they, before they bring up the next one, when you try to order the next one, they go, boop, boop, what do you think of this guy? For the last one. So then you go right there. You're like, oh, oh, that guy was terrible. But they didn't do that to me last time. They emailed it to me and I hit the wrong star. I thought I was just clicking on something to go to where I would rate them. Yeah. And I clicked on the four star by mistake. And I think I went back and tried to give them a five. But Usually it's five. If they have like shitty seats, you're like four. I haven't even told Joey. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. What? But I have some free time. I thought about, I looked into becoming an Uber driver. Yeah, why not? I went down there today. Comics do it. A lot of comics do it. Yeah, you just have, have a nice car. There was a line down there today. A line to get in. To where? To, to be an Uber driver. I went, I just, I looked online. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. But I was, I, someone told me they made a bunch of money. <sighs> so I, I went down. It was a parking lot in West L.A. And every 30 seconds, three new cars went in. They had five people doing inspections. Really? Making sure you're... Making sure your yeah, blinkers. Should be getting the keys and shit. No, what a nice car, BMWs. Well, they have that. Yeah. But uh, that they were making sure the blinkers and the horn worked and you had seat belts, and then oh, you just, really? you went and then they gave you because they they give you a background check, but they went and they give you some Uber stuff and I I don't know I might do it if I have some free time. Do make, it. Why not? Make a couple hundred bucks a week. And people are like it's dangerous. You don't know who you're getting your cab with. And you're like, yes, you do know. Because you ordered it through the fucking device. It keeps a record of that. Yeah. You don't know with cabs. Yeah, so I don't know. If Who you knows? lose something, you can tell, oh, I know what it was. You can contact someone. I gotta be so fucking bad. You wanna go? Yeah, something. Fuck, I'm dancing here. Oh, I thought you were just dancing to be oh, to dance. God, I mean, the, obviously the rhythm is in my heart and stuff, but like, <laughs> it got me, for sure. It was gonna get me, and then it got me. It's out to the left. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Nuts. I love it. I didn't know he had to pee. We're getting fucked up. Are you oh, I know. Let's do the sponsors right now, just in case. Let's give a shout out to the main people that keep this show motherfucking rocking them. On it. I mean, there's not much I can say about these savages. I just went on my alpha brain fucking uh, regimen last week. I had great sets this week. I, I slept great. I had some lucid dreams, but you know what? I feel good. I feel energetic. Alpha brain is their flagship, motherfuckers. It's the pork fried rice of this whole operation. If you ain't fucking around with uh, Alpha Brain and you ain't messing around with Onnit, you're fucking slipping. Go to Onnit.com right now. See what they got available to you. I'm not bullshitting you. From the strong bone, I give you the same fucking bullshit every week and you sit there and you listen to me. What the fuck is wrong with you? Go to Onnit right now. Right now. Get the Alpha Brain. You don't like it? It's 100% money back guarantee. You don't lose your guts. You don't even have to send it back. That's how fucking much confident they are about their product. But then they don't stop there. Whether it's the Shroom Tech, whether it's the fucking New Mood, whether it's the 180 Turnaround, whether it's, whether it's the MCT Oil, on it does not, does not stop. Go to onit.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off. Look at the Stay On It program where they send everything directly to your home, all right? Go to onit.com right now. Start right now. Forget the resolution. Also, my main man, Dave Foley, over at irondragonmotherfuckingtv.com. The best in classic martial art films, 4K TV. It's a Roku channel, and that's what they specialize in. They add new movies every week, whether you like uh, the movies that, uh, what's his name, did over in China. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan to the Man series. I mean, I tell you every week, do me a favor. Go there. Stop fucking around. They're free cool movies. TV.com. We're going to give you two movies on the arm for fucking free just to go over them. They got a ton of other stuff. They got Joe Rogan training. They got other videos. Bunch of other videos go over there right now you get two free movies for free tell them uncle joey sent you we ain't fucking with you go to iron dragon tv right now 
If you don't like classic martial arts, you're thinking about getting, how do you think this UFC started? <laughs> Somebody was scratching yeah. their head? No. Because they watched two Chinese guys flying <laughs> in the fucking air with strings. They said, maybe we get a fat fuck and a skinny fuck to do this. Bam, voila. <laughs> Go to fucking irondragontv.com right now. Press in. Joey. Ooh, get two free fucking movies on the, uh, tell them Uncle Joey sent you. Also, my main men what? over at Hitty Sings. Dot com throwing heat with the fucking vapor cigar. Whether you want the cigarettes, whether you're quitting real cigarettes and you want the fucking hitty cigarettes, they're the best on the market. Guaranteed 1,200 pups per fucking machine here. This is a fucking machine. Check it out. I've been smoking <laughs> the same fucking thing <laughs> for three weeks. You understand me? Go to hitty6.com right now and press in. Joey's church. And get 20% off your order. Get sent right to your fucking house. You don't got to leave the house. You order it today, you'll get it like by Thursday or Friday. And let's give a big <laughs> shout out to my main motherfuckers over there at NailedInLife.com specializing in the vapor pen for all you fucking dabbers and waxes uh -huh. and whatever the fuck Oil you do. Wax. You want to blow yourself up with some real wax, go to Nailed In Life. They got what you need. They got the <laughs> blow torch, the little blow torch, the long spoon to stick the fucking thing in the cannon. You'll be smoking for weeks. Go to NailedInLife.com. Their specialty vapor pen right now, they're going to give you 20% off. You understand me? Go to the box and press in. Joey Diaz. Oh, shit. Who's better than you? You got yourself a vapor pen. You got yourself a hitty sink. You got two free movies. And you got vitamins to keep you healthy. That's how we roll here at the church of what's happening now, motherfuckers. Get it together. <laughs> Sleeping while you're creeping. Hey, what do you think of um, Jose Man. Aldo fighting that, that kid? I think Jose Aldo's going to fucking take him and break him in fucking half. What you don't like Conor him? McGregor? Listen, it's just a it's just he hasn't a rolled been the top up. level guys yet though. It's just a rolled up uh he's very good at what he does, but he's just a rolled up channel center. And every time they get in bed with these guys, thank God Dana has a little dignity and is gonna have the fight in Las Vegas. Instead of in Brazil. Instead of in Brazil. Instead of home home court. Right. You know, that's Enough not fair that either. This is about Jose Aldo too. He's the champion. It's his fucking call. But they want to put him in the arena. But you told me months ago that Seaver wasn't going to be any sort of opponent. No. He's yeah, so then it's like now he suddenly deserves it after fighting a number 10 guy. It's like, come on. He lost his paperwork I mean, I on a trip from Germany. That guy's They love him, though. People love him. Who, Dennis Seaver? No. Or Conor love McGregor. Well, Conor McGregor. People, people love Cosby, love too. <laughs> you know? What are you telling me with he that? He just keeps roundhouse kicking over and over again. He's and very good. He's, he's like, very good. What's he like on the ground? He's 26. That's what we'll see. We don't Jose really know, Aldo. huh? Nobody knows. If you watch any of the UFC. Jose Aldo has nine K TKOs. I mean, I guess some of them are from getting on top and stuff and working position. Here's fucking leg kicks. <sighs> Jose Aldo, come at you. Like, this is be so good. Listen, if Conor McGregor's not in the gym today, starting the training for what the wrath he's going to go into. And he's also pulling that channel center where he's picking at the B. That was WWE. He knew he was going to do that. You know why he knew he was going to do that? Because Dana's bodyguard was there waiting for him. They knew that was WWE shit. If you're at home going, Connor's so cool, that was all planned. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't you think it was planned? You think it was? Yeah, it wasn't planned in Jose Aldo's world. I Jose, don't think Jose Aldo looked surprised. Yeah, Jose surprised Aldo surprised lit was, him up like right he, there. Like, he stood up? He's like, I'm not going to just sit he, down He went there, this, but he like, didn't really want to go there. Laugh it off. But. Aldo went, uh, the other guy went there, but he didn't really want to go there. So you, for you fucking Gentiles. He was just loud, but he wasn't going to get Yeah, for you Gentiles that got impressed, he went for him, but he made sure there was 10 people there before he got there. If yeah, like he see, stopped, he jumped over, stopped on the table, and then waited for people to go. And then he Step then down. he stepped in. So for you people who were impressed and jumping up and down, you get you people were fucking overtaken too quickly. I could sell you a fucking bridge, you fucking idiots. What do you think about? And Don here's Cerrone. why else it was planned. Why was Jose Aldo there? They don't they don't come to all the ones. Well, from, why they all there? the way from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro, where to he's Boston. drinking, he's drinking coconut juice and getting this. Dick and they suck. haven't come to certain ones, to especially Boston. if it's like a new, yeah. it's the same weight class. Well, but. yeah, they always do that. That's the next fight, but yeah, to oh, prep leave Jose Aldo. Well, he don't even right. give a fuck. You know, now the most interesting thing I like that, leave in the that Joe Rogan kept saying to him, right. Jose Aldo, are you ready to make more money now that you're going to fight in the arena? And Dana was like, Why is he saying that shit? Now, just because we're fighting the arena don't get mean he's getting more money. <laughs> that means we'll get more fucking paper. You know what I'm saying? Wait, and he we'll, fought in an arena in Brazil, didn't he? What, was the tickets cheap or something? I don't know. I that don't know that, that place went crazy. When Did I, you go to that one? The one where he jumped into the stands? Yeah. That he was... jumped right by me. Oh, my God, dude. He he jumped off. He, he wins. They don't even wait till I fucking interview him or anything. Fucking jumps out, runs, and hugs the fucking broadcasters that he knows, the Brazilian, and then runs into the stands. 
Starts hugging all his friends and family and shit. His yardies. That was so... I was fucking crying. Wasn't even high. We didn't even get weed till later. <laughs> I was crying. It was so nice. It was such a magical moment. That place was going crazy. I don't know. The only other time it was going that crazy was... Were you in Columbus when... When Randy beat Tim Sylvia? No. Oh, that was like a... That, from the first fight of the first night, the, the very first fight of the night, the place was packed. There was Columbus like 10 seats. was always a good fight place. I don't know what happened. I was there when Anderson fought Rich Franklin. Oh, yeah. That's the one we went to for the bodybuilding thing. Yeah. It's the Arnold Classic. So while the UFC is in town, all these big bodybuilders are walking around because the it's the Arnold Classic. I'll be the there Arnold this Classic, week for that's this. right. I'll be there this You're next going? week. You're going? Yeah, I'll be in there Super Bowl weekend at Columbus. Oh, that's cool. Really fucking excited. I've been there in two years. You know the first time I went there. What, to the, to the Funny Bone? To the Funny Bone in Columbus. The first time I went there was with Justin. It was, uh, so last year was 2014. So mm-hmm. this was 2013. I think Mercy was just born. It was the first week of the road after being home for eight weeks or nine weeks without the comedy store. I had like the ha-ha and I had like flappers, you know, like shit like that. Yeah. I went to Columbus, guys. I gotta tell you something. I ate it. Five fucking shows. Just bombing. Really? Oh. oh. I got laughs, but you know those laughs you can get anywhere? Mm-hmm. It was those laughs where it wasn't nothing put together. Like, I got shot from doing 15 minutes at Flappers to 47 and 48 minutes at Columbus. Thursday, I remember doing okay. But Friday and Saturday, I just died a slow death. They didn't bring me back last year. Oh, really? But they renovated the place, but I didn't do that well. In Columbus? So I called him back and told him the truth, and he fucking brought me back. He goes, no, I thought that, you know, your set were a little rusty, you could tell. Yeah. And that's why, Lee, we worked hard this fucking off season. Because you huh. got to, I was home for a few weeks. You know, I did that show in Vegas. So you, but 45, you got to get warmed up. Yeah. Gotta you got to get sometimes. warmed up. So I've been warming up the last couple of weeks. It's been fun at the comedy store lately. It really, it's, been great. it's uh it's bringing me back, you know. Full of people. It's great to be up there. There's a certain freedom at the comedy store. You can go off. You can do whatever you can the fuck you off. want. And it's it's here's how it is. Let's say you go to the YMCA every day. Yeah. And you go to Ari's house and you lift weights. And every day you lift weights with Ari at the YMCA. You push about two and a quarter, four sets of ten. For some reason, when you go to the comedy store, you can push two sixty five. Yeah, it's one of those kind of gyms. It's one of those type of places. I used to I used to not like fifteen minute sets as a as a Why? viewer. Too short. Or too yeah, because I, I used to like longer. I used to real only prefer like the hour long sets. Yeah, and the old world they do sevens and eights. But then everywhere going with Joey to the like, comments of the last few months, it's crazy to see how how good he's gotten. But then when you're re- when you're really good, and anybody who's really good, it's crazy to like be a part like. You, I don't think you could hold that for fifty for like sixty minutes, but for fifteen minutes you could like handle. What's well, a different? Out. Yeah, it's a different you don't energy. Have to stop. A sprint I know. I'm a, I got eighteen minutes. I know I could condense thirty two minutes into eighteen minutes, which means danger and just killing which nonstop. Means, yeah, you're just yeah. gonna have little sentences out at them, and they're gonna suck each one up. But there's no setup. There's no punch. You know, I can eliminate everything. I'll eliminate the segue if you let me. I'll just say punchlines <laughs> like a motherfucker <laughs> and say it my way, you know? Because as a consumer... Shh. Uh, uh, Maya! <laughs> Asuka! <laughs> <laughs> this was a special podcast. You got a furt, a fart, and a burp. <laughs> a fart, a fart. A fart. <laughs> you got a fart and a burp in this one. We got to get the fuck out of here, guys. Ari Shafir, so you're at the Denver Comedy Works yeah, next week. Denver Comedy Works. And then where else in February? The parlor, the new downtown parlor. In Seattle, where in else? Seattle. Brea, Portland. So you're in Portland in February? I think or March. Where are you in February, cocksucker? Parlor and. In Brea. Uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, where are you in the next two weeks? Oh, Denver. All right. This weekend. Super Bowl, Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl weekend. Then uh, two weeks after that, Seattle. Okay. I th- that might be until the very end of, fe- of February. Yeah, you're like me. You're just going out very limited. Yeah. Most of the time you're here. Yeah. We're trying to make, put it together right here during pilot season. Yeah, Portland. Bray, Bray is like in town-ish, you yeah. know. Bray is good. Might go to San Diego maybe. I don't know. Go to the yeah. local store. We'll figure it out and get back to us. All right? Asuka. Asuka. 
Uh, I love you, cocksuckers. I'm going to be in Buffalo this weekend. And uh, next week I'll be at the Columbus motherfucking Funny Bone. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much. Happy Martin Luther King Day to all the black people out there. we got to end this with some fucking black music. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Sam Cooke. No, 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 no. Let's do something. Let's do a little Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. yeah. Remember the time, Michael Jackson. Thank In you. honor of being over, over, <laughs> overcome by Bill Cosby on the <laughs> We Don't Want to Believe It tour. Thank you, Ryan, for coming on today. Yeah, you know, man, this is a lot of fun. On. Those stars are great. To all your success. I'm telling you. Thanks. We watched at the Comedy Store. Everybody's in the patio of the Comedy Store. Yeah, I watched it on the way out. I just couldn't get in there, so I just... Yeah. And I got it at the house. Me and the wife watched too. it last night for a little while. We, I love the piano thing. I really... Fucking around with Jeff. That's what I wanted that, to show. Just like a regular set at the award. Yeah, that's I fucked around the crowd a little. I, you know... Yeah, the stuff with Jeff. Was it cool seeing it on, the TV, on TV? Like, seeing your name on TV guy? That has to be kind of cool. That was alright. That was okay. I liked seeing it at the store watching, like, on the, on the fucking, you know... Like, you don't, I, you don't have a DVR. Right in the same room. Yeah, I don't have but a DVR. If I, I went to my DVR... DVR and, I got it on my DVR. It looks very nice. Yeah, but if you had, like, the Joey Diaz special and you're just scrolling through and it's next to, like, that'd be kind of cool. Very nice. Right, right, right. You're your own thing. All right, close the show, cocksucker. What are we closing with? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, remember the time... That was a like catch. This. Des Bryant. That was a catch. I think so, too. Everybody knows that was a catch. Great Seattle game, though. Let's be Yesterday? honest. That was, that was classic. Okay, end your show. I'm okay. sorry. Go to onit.com and use code word church to get 10% off of your order. Uh, go to hitesix.com. <laughs> Better tasting, longer lasting. The proof <laughs> is in the vape. Uh, use code word Joey's church to get 20% off. Go to Iron Dragon TV and use code word Joey to get two free rentals. I am fucked up. Yeah. And go to nailedlife.com and use code word Joey to get... 20% off the premier rate for print on the market. You guys are crazy.